Good night, St. John. Good night to the good people of this constituency and to all of you who have traveled near and far to attend this Barbados Labour Party mass meeting here in the constituency of St. John. How are you feeling tonight? Good, good, good. It is indeed a pleasure to be in this constituency. We are gathered tonight for another mass meeting put on by the Barbados Labour Party to be able to bring, the pe bring to the people of St. John a message of hope and also a message that will tell you when we leave this platform tonight that St. John deserves better. Barbados deserves better. But St. John deserves better for sure. And we are going to tell you on this platform, speaker after speaker tonight, why we have mounted this podium tonight to be able to tell you that St. John deserves better. Now, many of you may wonder why Santia Bradshaw, the candidate, the representative for the constituency of St. Michael's Southeast, is here tonight to chair this meeting, right? Because I am from St. Michael. That's what you're telling yourselves. But I want the people of this constituency, and for those of you who do not know already, that my navel string is buried in this constituency. From both sides of my family, both from my mother's side, my, my grandfather came from St. John. So all the red legs, and as they were called them, the Eki Beckys, the St. John family to me. And on the other side of my family, on the side of Braddy, Delia Bradshaw, my father, I also have roots in St. John, in, in Edgecliff in St. John. My father is a product of this constituency of St. John. So I have often had to say to the representative, Mara Thompson in Parliament, that I have more entitlement to speak about the issues of St. John than she does. Because my family still resides in this constituency from both sides. And at the end of the day, the things that affect the people of this constituency in turn also affects me as well. And so I want you to understand this in a St. Michael girl that come into the stage tonight. Understand that the issues that are affecting you in St. John directly impact on Santia Bradshaw and her family in this constituency as well. And so I want you to understand that when I have sat in Parliament as a leader of opposition business for the past couple of years, having had Mara Thompson come through the by-election by in St. John in 2011 and then be re elected by the people of this constituency, there was nothing that could be more painful than to see that after all of the fanfare that was created by the Democratic Labour Party, what I witnessed over the past couple of years is poor representation for the people of this constituency in Parliament. And I'm going to speak to that. Because this constituency was accustomed to having leaders emerge who were prime ministers and representatives who were prime ministers of Barbados. This constituency was accustomed to having people who were head teachers of secondary, secondary of primary schools in this, con in this country. This constituency was accustomed to a level of representation in parliament for which the people no doubt looked up to because the persons who were put there to represent them, whether they were Barbados Labour Party members or whether they were Democratic Labour Party members, were there to speak out on behalf of the people of St. John. But I have witnessed over the course of the past few years a level of representation in parliament by Mara Thompson the wife of the late Prime Minister David Thompson, where it became so comical at times that we would laugh, Dwight and myself and others would remark that I wonder if she's going to make five minutes. Because every occasion on which she spoke, she was not able to muster a speech on behalf of you, the people of this constituency, that it would allow the rest of us to believe that she understood the plight of the very people that she was put here to represent. Not even five minutes Mara Thompson could muster in Parliament. But it got worse because even when she attempted in the five minutes to be able to represent the people in the constituency, her speeches were plagued with accusations towards the government in relation to things that they had not done in the constituency. And it was very telling because if the wife of the former Prime Minister cannot get anything done, it says to me that the rest of us are going to have to suck salt. And that is indeed what we have all done. So when she spoke about the roads and the plight of the people in St. John, 
The roads that I had to come to traverse to get here tonight, and many of you had to come that are deplorable. Nobody in the Democratic Labour Party paid her any attention. The roads are in the same state that they were when the Barbados Labour Party left office. They have not done anything in relation to the roads. And when she spoke about the issues of transportation, about the plight of people waiting long hours to be able to get transportation to get into St. John, that in some cases you had to go to town to get a bus to be able to commute from one area to the next in St. John. Again, the Minister of Transport did not listen to Mara Thompson. And it soon became evident that Mara Thompson was being ignored. And I come here tonight to tell you that I am in sympathy with Mara Thompson for no longer wanting to come back to the people of St. John. And I say that because this woman was held up in high esteem. She was called the queen of St. John. She was here promising to be able to deliver to you, the constituents here in this area, that she was going to not only continue the legacy of David Thompson, but she was going to surpass and to act on the things that he left in the making for the people of this constituency. But you know, it is evident that Mara Thompson did not want she, want, rather want she was able to achieve what she did for the Democratic Labour Party, which is secure this seat in the 2013 election. Mara Thompson was of no use to the Barbados, to the Democratic Labour Party, or to the people of this constituency. So when I hear even constituents speak to the issue of not being able to see Mara Thompson, not being able to see her walk through this constituency with you, I am not surprised. Because I believe that even if she intended to help, and if she believed that all of the hype was there for her to be able to do things for the people of St. John, she too has become frustrated by a Democratic Labour Party that has ignored the people in this constituency and wider Barbados. So tonight, I am giving Mara Thompson the excuse that Mara Thompson has not given to the people of this community. Because she needs to tell the people of this country that she is disappointed with the level of representation in this country from the level of the Prime Minister but also the level of the ministers upon whose back she believed that she would have gained support to be able to fulfill things in this constituency for you, the people out here. And it burns me as somebody, as I told you, that has family in this area because it is clear that there has been no progress in this constituency for the past few years. That if Marathon had to speak up about, speak up about the issues in relation to education in this constituency about the fact that the, the vision that David Thompson would have had for this community where you would have had a stimulation of economic activity and education being at the forefront and at vanguard of Democratic Labour Party policies that she herself has had to complain that those things have not been achieved under a Democratic Labour Party administration and so I'd like to tell people that I don't like to use my own words or the words of the Barbados Labour Party, you know, to prove a point that y'all need to vote out this Democratic Labour Party administration. There is enough evidence amongst the members of the Democratic Labour Party upon what they say about themselves and their leadership and their inability to get things done in this country. That I, Santia Braja, don't have to stand here and tell you that the Democratic Labour Party has failed. The Democratic Labour Party members have told you that they have failed this country and they have failed the people of this constituency as well. And it is something that each and every one of you, if you have been loyalist to the Democratic Labour Party, I understand that. I understand legacy. I understand having gone through the by-election in this constituency, going into people's households and seeing pictures of the late Earl Walton Barra on the wall. I understand what it is to, to, to reflect on the fact of where people have come from in terms of giving people who could not afford to be able to get a free education the opportunity to have one. And I understand that it must mean something to many of you who have supported the Democratic Labour Party to know that Arab Barra is regarded as the father of independence. But what I will not accept in this country and at this time of 2018, when our back is against the wall, that you will continue not just to reflect on the period when you had strong leadership in this constituency, but on the fact that every single thing that the Democratic Labour Party has done over the past few years has not been in the interest of the people of this country. And if it is 
that you continue to hold dear to the past. I want you to think about your children. And I want you to think about the future generations of this country. Because everywhere I go, Democratic Labour Party supporters will say to me, this is the worst administration since independence. Those are not my words. Those are the words of the people across Barbados. And they are worried that the people of St. John, you know, I remember in the by-election, Carrie, and I walked through various areas out here. And I remember going into a house and a lady said to me, listen, they could bring Mickey Mouse on the Democratic Labour Party ticket. We're going to vote for them. And it pained me then as it pains me now. Because I believe that the tide is changing. I believe that the people in this constituency deserve a better level of representation. And you know, I believe that, that, that my boy, Charles, is the person to be able to lead you out of the horrid mess that has been created by this administration and in this constituency. You know, this administration had the opportunity to give this candidacy to a Democratic Labour Party member who was born from this area. They had that opportunity and they overlooked Leroy McLean. When David Thompson became the member for St. John, Leroy McLean was also interest in, interested in seeking to become the member for the candidate for this constituency. And he was overlooked then. And when the opportunity arose for another candidate after David Thompson died to represent you in this constituency, they overlooked him again. But now, on the eve of an election, Mara Thompson decides that she no longer wants to run in elective politics. And you are hearing one of two names being mentioned again. Leroy McLean and George Pilgrim, the General Secretary of the Democratic Labour Party. And I want the people of this constituency to understand that you cannot allow any more that people can just be thrust on you. Because if they are prepared to reject their hometown boy, we have a hometown boy for the constituency of St. John. And so I know that he will join us in due course in the House of Parliament to be able to give proper representation to this constituency. And he is going to join others because he is going to join others in the Barbados Labour Party because we have a cadre of people who are youthful, we have a cadre of people who are, in some cases, inexperienced, but have a passion to serve the people of this country. And we also have people who are stalwarts in this country. People like Glenn Clark, who I'm going to welcome to the stage shortly. Yes, the member for St. George North, who for me has been somebody that I have watched evolve in politics, just as I have come now to st allow him to see me evolve in politics, because he came through the ropes under my father. And he has emerged in as a strong stalwart of the Barbados Labour Party for four consecutive terms in this country, unbeaten record. And it gives me great pleasure to welcome people who are hardworking to be able to speak to you about what it is to create a legacy, what it is to be remembered for the things that you have done, the ways in which you have improved people's lives, how you have transformed the Barbados economy. And Glenn Clark has been a part of that transformation. Glenn Clark will be a part of the transformation to come. And I want you to put your hands together and to welcome to the stage the next representative for St. George North, none other than Glenn Clark. Good night. Thank you, Joy. Thank you, thank you. Good night to the people of St. John, especially the folks of Four Roads and the surrounding districts. Good night to the BLB family. Special good night to all those who, have, those who have come to this meeting for the first time. I welcome you. In the book of Psalms, chapter 30, verse 5, we are told that weeping shall endure for the night, but joy cometh in the morning. Joy comes in the morning. Let's all therefore have hope. For the time is near. 
and the light you'll find is at the end of the tunnel. We are here tonight in support of our colleague and friend Charles Griffith, a young man born and raised in this parish, a man who is a community organizer, a community practitioner. Charles was chosen in a democratic process by the members of this branch, Barbados Labour Party branch. On the other hand, the Democratic Labour Party is once again bringing a man from outside this parish who has been rejected time and time again by his own people. And they want him to represent the parish of St. John. This is shameful and disgraceful. There are several other people, men and women, who are outstanding citizens of St. John, who have made tremendous contribution to the growth and the development of this parish. They have made tremendous contribution in education and health and community service. I speak of persons from this parish, like Sir Keith Hunt, Professor Woodville Marshall, Professor Henry Fraser, Mr. Graydon Seeley, the former principal of the Garrison Secondary, my good friend Pearson Bellamy, who was a cultural person in this parish, and my campaign manager, Mr. Eddie Ed Emerson Teddy Howard, who has done a very good job in the past 20 years. I want to thank Teddy. And of course, my good friend, Kenneth Hines, uh, who is from this parish. I also want to speak tonight briefly of my friend, I heard Sandia spoke of him a while ago, Dr. Leroy McLean, who grew up in my, Knight's Village just across there, across from Four Rose. And he has worked his way through primary and secondary school right here. He has gone on to do research. Can the Democratic Labour Party not find anybody suitable from St. John to represent this parish? I say to the people of St. John, the present administration has let you down. It has been a disgrace to the legacy of the right excellent Errol Barr and even David Thompson. Everything that Errol Barr stood for has been taken down and burned by this administration. I speak of free secondary tertiary education a university that was taken down by this present administration. A low tax regime which the Democratic Labour Party started after 1966 was kicked down by this present administration. High taxation, accountability and responsibility in government, not so this present administration. And of course, the CARICOM movement. Tonight, the present administration does not want anybody from CARICOM to vote. And that is serious. Under Errol Walton Barr, he formed the CARICOM movement. And persons from CARICOM is entitled on the democratic process everywhere in the Commonwealth to vote. But we have the Democratic Labour Party tonight is challenging that movement. I want to say to you tonight that if Errol Barr was still alive, I believe that he will endorse Charles Griffith. I know that he, in his wisdom, could not support the present movement called the Democratic Labour Party. I believe also that Errol Barr, in his wisdom, would stridently support Mayor Motley as the next Prime Minister of this country. He would. He could not support a fascist government who believe in full conservatism. This is what this government believes. I want to say to you, the people of St. John, it has been very hard eight years for the people of St. John and indeed all Barbados. Life under the present administration has been very hard. I know and understand what the people of St. John have endured. I lived in this parish right here at Four Rose for many years. My sister 
and her children and her grandchildren still live at Sherbourne. My aunt, Miss Iris Lewis, live right here at Spooners. And my cousins still live there. I have countless friends in Four Roads. I have a number of supporters who come from Asbury and Golden Ridge to this meeting. I know the struggles that you have been facing. And I feel the pain with you. Because all of us went through the pain and suffering of the Democratic Labour Party. I want to say to the people of St. John. That when I first thought about entering elective politics. I thought about St. John too. Because as I said I live in this parish. But David Thompson was here. So I went to St. George North. And I have been the candidate. And the member of parliament from 1994. Unbroken. Thanks to my good people of St. George North. And I want to say to you, I understand the loyalty the people of St. John have for the right excellent Arab bar. I understand the loyalty because he was the first prime minister of independent Barbados. But let's face it, the present prime minister and the Democratic Labour Party have not been good to the people of St. John. Have not been good to the people of St. John. When you look Across St. John tonight, you see nothing that the Democratic Labour Party has done in this present term for the people of St. John. They now started to do two roads there at Gold Hill. But when, the stretch, when you look at the stretch from Charo Bridge to St. John, Sergeant Street, you find that the Democratic Labour Party, even Michael Lashley, has done very little for the people of this constituency. They are treating St. John as though it is enemy territory. I could understand if they had not elected a Democratic Labour Party candidate. If they treated St. George badly, I won't mind too bad. Or St. Joseph or St. Andrew. But they have treated St. John people with scant respect. Every time. When you look at the buses coming out here, sometimes you have to wait four hours, five hours for a bus. And the same bus you wait for sometimes break down. It is real terrible. St. John people have suffered under the Democratic Labour Party. I recall as Minister of Housing and Public Works that we had formulated plans to do a number of things in this constituency. From Highway F, F those of you who know Highway F, that is Bathsheba, up to Bath. We did that highway. As Minister of Public Works, we also did roads from Charles Road Bridge to St. John Parish Church. We did Massage Street. We did all the roads up to Bath and we were doing work. We completed housing development at Gall Hill. And you know what? We also sold spots at Azores and also Bath. Bath St. John is a land owned by the government of Barbados. And we were able under the Tenantry Freehold Purchase Act to give people at Bath, people at Poole, the people at Sherry Grove, all across St. John, Malvern, lots at 10 cents a square foot. That was the legacy of the Barbados Labour Party tonight. But what do you have? The Democratic Labour Party has done very little in St. John. And we have to remind them that life has been hard under the Democratic Labour Party. I am saying to you, that under the Democratic Labour Party, things have been failure after failure. They failed in the economy, manufacturing, tourism, agriculture. Look at the lands across St. John. They're all in courage. They're all in grass. Pool St. John used to have the biggest yams, potatoes, and of course, good hard sugar canes. I am saying to you, that the legacy of St. John is now prominent within the Democratic Labour Party. You look at Poole St. John. You look at Todd's. All these plantations are now gone to ruin. And all they do is have courage. All they have well grass. This is a failure. If you look at the roads from Four Roads here to Todd's. The road from Four Roads to Todd is the worst road I have seen in Barbados for a long time. It is now a car road. 
I do not even believe a donkey cart would walk the pass in that road. It's really, really bad. And the Democratic Labour Party has done very little. You look across Barbados and you see. You look across Barbados and you see that all the roads now have potholes. You cannot pass properly. Your cars need shops. You buy your shops today. Tires are burst. All of these things happen under the Democratic Labour Party. I am saying to you that it is time for the government to step aside. The government continues to hold on to power because they feel that we will run out of time. And the present administration wants to hold on to power as long as they think fit. This is unfair to the people of Barbados. I say to the men and women of St. John, you have to get up and take things in your hand. You have to take time, I understand. But you have to understand that this is serious business. The people of St. John must actively demonstrate that you cannot bring any and everybody here to represent us and we take it. The people must respect the decision. And I say to you, that it's time for us politicians to understand that people's voices are important. Your voice is important. If it is one thing, I know that you have a voice this time. Every five years, the people of Barbados have a voice. You have to come out and vote in your large numbers in order to show this government that you mean business. And you know what is happening? The present prime minister is saying that he wants to save Barbados. He said he wants to save Barbados. Save Barbados from what? You only talk about saving if somebody is drunken. You talk about saving if something has fallen into a pit. The Prime Minister is admitting that this country has fallen. He has admitted that this country has fallen and it needs to be saved. I want to say to you tonight that we must sell to the government that we need to save the transport sector. People have to wait too long for buses. We need to save our roads. Everywhere, potholes. We need to save our dollar. And we need to save tourism. And when the Prime Minister talk about saving, he cannot be talking about the future. He is talking about what has happened to Barbados. He has admitted that the country needs saving. We have to save this country from the present administration. If this present administration is returned to office, I want to say to you, crap or smoke your pipe. You have to understand that this is serious business. The government is holding on to power as long as they can. Right now, the people of St. George, because my constituency is just over there. And I know that the people of St. George North will elect me again. I know that. I know that. And I want the people of St. John to join us. I want the people of St. John to join us. We have to save this country. And don't allow the Prime Minister to come and tell you he wants to save this country. Save what? He is not talking about the future. Because he never said the country wants saving in the future. He said that he wants to save this country. But you know what he wants to do? He has dug the hole. He has put this country in a hole and he wants to be able to get it out. Don't give him the chance because to bring it out, he's going to think about more taxes for you. You can imagine for the past eight years, civil servants have not got an increase of salary. It is unfair. It is unfair. The minimum wage is still $7 an hour or less than that. There are people in Barbados who still work for 6 and $7 per hour have not raised on the Democratic Labour Party. I am saying to the people of St. John, you cannot elect the Democratic Labour Party in this next election. And you know something? The Prime Minister said he's going to surprise you. He said he's going to surprise you. He's going to take 21 days. 21 days. So you know what 21 days means? That he is going to come like a thief in the night and you will not have time. But I have called in Parliament for a fixed election. I believe that we have to be able to clean up a lot of mess that is happening. 
We cannot take this thing where a prime minister might come and have an election or might not come. I am saying to you, I am saying to the people of St. John that you have a chance in this election. The coming election is about you, about your children. And you have to ask yourself the question, what is it I am going to leave for my children? It is about your children and the future of Barbados is at stake. I want to say to you tonight that the Barbados Little Party offers you hope. The Barbados Little Party offers you hope in the form of Mayor Amor Motley. I want to say to you tonight that the time has come for us to elect the female lady who will move Barbados forward. I want to say to the people of St. George and the people of St. John, stay firm. Stay firm and do not be fooled. Good night and God bless you. Thank you. The Barbados Labour Party moves to Christchurch West Central at the Briar Hall Plain Field near the Graham Hall Roundabout this Sunday at 7 p.m. Come here in their rear, Ryan Strawn, Wilfred Abrams, Dr. William Dugid, Ralph Thorne, Tyron Lovell, Kerry Simmons, candidate Adrian Medic Ford, and party leader Mia Amor Motley. Don't despair, Christchurch. There's a medic in the house. The Barbados Labour Party at the Briar Hall Plain Field this Sunday at 7 p.m. Confident to, confidence to the people of this country. Now tonight, you know, as I was coming here, I reflected on the last term of Parliament. And I reflected on a couple of comments, unfortunately, that have been made in Parliament about women. And have been made in Parliament about women from the person who represents this constituency. And as I bring the next speaker to the fore, I want the members of this constituency to understand that it is unfortunate when we use the halls of parliament to pull down each other, whether it is male across the floor to females, whether it is male on male, whether it is female on female. It is an unfortunate thing to use the parliamentary process to, to, to bring about um, criticism towards our colleagues across the political divide. The member for St. John, as I told you before, could only often muster a five minute speech, but on every occasion that she spoke and she could not offer the substance to represent you, the people of St. John, it was clear that somebody else was writing the speeches for the honorable member. And on the occasion where she decided that she was going to lash out against the leader of the Barbados Labour Party and in turn point to me as well as being a woman in politics who was childless, you know, I dealt with her. Because I will not stand idly by and allow someone who has inherited a seat in this country to be able to stand up in the halls of parliament and criticize the work that people like myself and Mia Motley and others have done in relation to families and in relation to helping to build communities in this country. And for an honorable member who represents this constituency to lower herself to that level. And I want you to understand that I have nothing against Mara Thompson. Mara Thompson was my physical education teacher when I was at the foundation school. So I know Mara Thompson well. But when she could stoop to the level to which she did to raise issues about whether you were fit for high office because you did not have children. I understand why she's not putting herself before the electorate again. Because there are other people in this constituency who do not have children whom she has offended. And she knows she cannot come back to the electorate of St. John and ask for a vote. I want her to understand that and I want the Democratic Labour Party to understand that they owe the people of this community, the women of this community, an apology. And whoever they send need to apologize to the people of this community for those unfortunate comments as well. But I am fortunate tonight to be able to be part of a team that has a young lady who I think many underestimate her true potential. 
Many underestimate this next person who I'm going to bring to the stage. She is one of five candidates that the Barbados Labour Party has put forward to you for the next general election. She's a lady who is a doctor, a family physician. She's a professional. She's a woman who is very no-nonsense. And I have not known Dr. Sonia Brown long, but in the time that I have known Dr. Sonia Brown, I know that she will call a spade a spade. That she joins a caliber of other women within the Barbados Labour Party that understand right from wrong. That she understands that when she comes to public life, if she holds a ministry, that it is not going to be about kickbacks. It is not going to be about dipping her hand in the public purse and seeing what she can get to fatten her pockets. She has come to public life to be able to serve the people of her constituency in St. Philip North. And that is what she's going to do. And I want each and every one of you to join with me in welcoming Dr. Sonia Brown to the stage tonight. The next representative for the constituency of St. Philip North. Night St. John. Thanks for welcoming me. <laughs> I see you. Now, when I was told or asked to speak at this meeting a couple of days ago, I was wondering where should I come. I was trying to understand the St. John people. And this might more appeal to the women or the, or the audience, not so much the men, but no offense to you. But I was wondering where the loyalty and this false sense of hope came from for the St. John people. But not only for the St. John people, for the St. Lucy people, and to some extent to the St. Philip people. Because since independence, no other representative was in St. John rather other than the DLP. And I'm wondering where is the loyalty coming from? But then it occurred to me, this relationship with the St. John people and the Democratic Labour Party is something like the man-woman relationship relationship, the husband and wife relationship. And I'll tell you why. From 1971, when Barra took the government post independence, we understood the loyalty then. We understood that Barbados had a lot of potential. Barra was bright and shining and new. And we took that relationship. Barra was the best thing and the DLP was the best thing since sliced bread. Normal thinking for the beginning of a relationship. But then, you continue with this thinking, loyal as ever, in this dysfunctional relationship. And then in 1973, when the oil crisis hit, the economy started falling drastically. People started losing their business. People started losing their jobs. Unemployment was at a low. You still supported the Democratic Labour Party. As in 1976, the BLP, a new boy on the block, Tom Adams took over. And you still supported the DLP with blind optimism. Because, like any other relationship, when you want to get rid of a man, he will come with a little necklace or a little chain. And you say, all right, give you a little chance. Hold on a little longer. Y'all women can understand what I'm saying. Almost everybody lived it. Maybe it was the thought that you know where you got, but you don't know where you're getting. So I forgive you for that. I forgive you for that. But in the meantime, Tom Adams was looking after the tenant tree, tenant trees, allowing people, as Glenn said, to buy land at 10 cents a square foot. He introduced that. They, were in, they brought in good housing programs, not like the Michael Lashley housing program, program. I lived that with these pretty houses in Parish Land and in River that nobody in, that can't fit anybody, that nobody can afford. That wasn't the Tom Adams legacy. That BLP started the central bank. Tom Adams must be rolling in his grave wondering what happened with this printing of money. That was our BLP. They started the NCF for those of you who didn't know. Cynthia would know. The ABC Highway. None of us can imagine we're going from St. Lucie to the airport with me now. My favorite, he started the drug service where people 
like you and to some extent me can enjoy free uh, free medication for the illnesses since the the price your well now we have a drug service that is sorely lacking in supply medication for people soon you will hear if you haven't heard already that the drug service the, the drug formula is becoming an all generic formulary so the shift will be to change people from the medication they're used to, the medication that they have been controlled on, to something else to start all over again. They tried it a couple years ago and it didn't work. We're trying it again, I suppose. Yet St. John and St. Lucy remain faithful. Y'all did not lose a sense of hope or loyalty. But by 1986, as you did, you invited the DLP back in again. The DLP came sniffing around with false promises again. And like a woman would do, give you another chance. A little hug and a snuggle and a kiss. And he back in. That's right. And the marriage continued. And the suffering start. Sadly, the Dipper died in 1987. And we can understand your grief. We can understand you really don't talk about nobody bad when they're dead. We can understand y'all, <laughs> y'all voting them back in, but this is what happened. Erskine Sandiford took over, and the hardship began again. Y'all remember when 8% was cut from your salaries in an attempt to save the economy? But then, no confidence vote, but St. John and St. Lucy held on strong to that husband. Held on strong. St. John remained faithful by then. St. Philip was also becoming in that mindset that the DLP was the all in all. They fell for the manifesto promises, St. John Cole. They fell for the promises of new roads. And I can almost safely say that the roads in St. John have been the worst roads that Barbados has ever seen since then. This from a parish who has have enjoyed representation from two prime ministers and a prime minister's wife. You all deserve better, and I hope you know that. We put up with the promise that nobody would lose their jobs. What happened? 4,000 people went home as soon as they got in. Well, my, my boy Michael is letting you back in now. I hear jobs are given away at the transport board. But beware, beware of the gifts being born. We were promised a reduction in cost of living. What did that mean? The VAT went up. NSRO went on. Cost of living was ridiculous. There was something called the solid waste tax, waste tax, which I'm yet to understand where it came from and what it was for. But my house had in one and a half people, meaning my little girl. My neighbor's house had in five, and mine, mine was more. So I never quite understood the logic of it. Maybe I asked Sinclair, but. But. St. John people remain starry-eyed and hopeful and excited again with this Democratic Labour Party. What did we get? A bus service that was dismal. I have patients in St. John. I'm in Blaisdell, which is almost St. John. I have patients that walk to my office from Sergeant Street, no lie. Because after waiting two, three hours for the bus, it just didn't make any sense. I have to put patients in my car from Blaisdell and brought them up to Small Hope. I know what I'm talking about. And thank you, dear. And then there's the problem with the garbage and the stinky tongue on the cook, so of course. That's a source of embarrassment. An emergency by all right, so of course, with Wilfred, fair enough. Then you personally knew about the water issues, which were not so far away, recent past. I know seeing these plastic sandpipes all through St. John, that ugly fine, that's a new word, ugly fine people's properties. There's not good enough. We have the polyclinic. I gave them kudos for that for a minute. I was so excited about it. I said, oh my gosh, I don't have to send patients to QEH to get x-rays. Oh my gosh, if somebody brought the foot, I could get some cast put on. Oh my gosh. The only thing I could do to claim to find is dialysis coming up. But the thing isn't finished. We operating on a big place that empty, same staff. The weight is still the same. Pretty building with the same infrastructure and all person infrastructure that is. This is what y'all got. We got a wiggle of laws that were passed in two, three hours. 
Poor gentleman in the police force, I heard he got transferred. Now police commit blunders and get transferred. The LP commit blunders and still at it. Where is the justice in that? And then I felt proud, well not proud, I felt disappointed that I was dealing with the issue at the St. Mark's school, which many of you may have heard about the situation that the school was just ridiculous. But then I'm also told that Charles is having the same issue with St. John Primary, for instance. We are three classrooms in the hall, same as St. Mark's. Children have no place to run around and play, and that's one of the most important things. Pardon? That's all right. It will get there. Carol will wait two minutes on me. And then it didn't only stop there, it affected the middle class. And of course, St. John has a middle class. We dealt with tax incentives disappearing. The mutual funds are used to buy every year, no tax, no, no tax incentives for that. The credit union savings for the poor man couldn't claim for taxes. All these things affected us. But this kind of thing must end. Every bad relationship at some point must come to an end. Everybody knows that when a woman done with you, she done with you. It might take years, but when she done, she done. I was in Mia's office the other day talking. I know she told me, maybe we were, I can't remember the conversation exactly. But when you're done with the man, you're done with it, don't take it back. This is how you people must see the Democratic Labour Party. But a new man in town, people, who goes by the name, who goes by the name of Mr. Charles Griffith. Back by the dream team, which is led by Mia Motley. So you can now forget about the empty promises. That man old, he ain't much use no more. Find somebody that can help you take care of your children. Find somebody that can see with the party that your children can be educated for free again at UE. And everybody on the same level again. Because we come in with a plan. A real one. Our manifesto will mean something. Poor Fronda must be sorry it leaked. Mm -hmm. But unlike Fronda, whose only legacy will be to prolong elections as long and long and long as it can, we will do better. People listen, John, when you lose them, you can hurt. You can grieve, but you can get over it. Do what you need to do. Tell Fronda he's dying, but don't take us with you. Do what you need to do, get up early in the morning and vote, because you don't know if the buses can get you to the polling station after work. And tell Fran that it's over, walk into the light and give up. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. That is what I am talking about. The Barbados Labour Party has strong women, not just at the front, but supporting the leadership of the Barbados Labour Party. So you understand when we have the next Prime Minister, the caliber of people that we are going to be bringing to the fore, and people like Dr. Sonia Brown and Marsha Cattle and Sandra Husbands and others, and you have Cynthia Ford there in the vanguard at the forefront. Helping to uplift the people of St. John, the women of St. John, and the people of this country. Because we understand the passion that is needed to be able to uplift our people. And when you have people who have come from a profession, like the health profession, like Dr. Sonia Brown, who understands how people are hurting, how it is difficult for people to get medication in this country, you can't ask for anything better. What has Mara Thompson brought to the table? I remember a time when I heard about families first. And how she was supposed to have a campaign in St. John where everybody was supposed to get fit. Instead, the food killing the people at St. John, killing the people across this country. People can't even get food to eat to be able to put a decent meal on the table. You don't hear about that. But you know what you don't hear about either? You don't hear about the legacy that was supposed to be left by Mara Thompson and David Thompson. Remember there was a time in the by-election when you heard about how the seat for St. John was going to be handed over to the daughter. 
What happened to that Democratic Labour Party? The people of this constituency need to wake up. Because you know, it is not enough to just have a house down in Martins Bay. But you can't get the roads to Martins Bay fixed. And the business people down in Martins Bay are suffering. Because the tourists don't want to come down in Martins Bay to enjoy the peace of the East Coast. And people like you who live in the area have find it difficult to be able to traverse the constituency. But you had a representative that has a property in Martins Bay. But couldn't have the common courtesy and decency to be able to ensure that the people in this community got proper roads. Even if it was where, where she had a property. Come on, man. The people of St. John must wake up. The people of Barbados must wake up because you deserve better. It can no longer be convenient to come to the people and throw anything at them. And tell them, oh, you're, you're bringing the family, you have a dynasty. All of these things they came and told the people of St. John. And it sounded good at the time. It sounded good to be able to hoodwink you into believing that they cared. It sounded good to make the young people in this constituency who have perhaps been some of the ones who have suffered the most because they are the ones who walked with David Thompson. They are the ones who went into the dubs. They are the ones who went on the blocks. They are the ones who were told, we are for you. And instead of uplifting the people of this constituency, the Democratic Labour Party has done nothing to help the young people in this community. Telling people about their Bill of Polyclinic and the polyclinic ain't even done yet. Have people who walk with David Thompson coming out, not in this election, but within the years after Mara Thompson took up the representation for this constituency, speaking out and telling you the people that they did not look after them. They are the ones who helped to put them there, to make them seem palatable to the people of this country, to the young people. That where they, they, they wanted to make you believe that they had your best interest at heart. But you know, <clears throat> I find hope in a Barbados Labour Party, you see. Because my leader is youthful. My leader understands the way things have to work at the top, at the middle, and at the bottom. My leader understands what it is that young people need to get going in this country in terms of entrepreneurship and small business. That people have ideas that need to be stimulated and she is prepared to put her money where her mouth is. But we will no longer in this constituency allow you to be fooled by Democratic Labour Party members. To be able to come and tell you that they're going to do something for you and they then turn around and don't do what they say they're going to do. It is why people in this community are frustrated that you think that all of us are the same. But we are not the same because, you know, I have a member for this Barbados Labour Party that I'm going to bring to the stage. John King. A member that has been known to many of you as a Calypsonian. When I was young, I used to sing, I want a plantation. I want it at any cost. I grew up believing that as a young woman, I could go outside and I could plant fruit trees and I could have my own plantation too. He was able to inspire me and others to be able to look to, to bigger things and greater things. He has a passion for young people. And the people in St. Philip West are fortunate to have him. I understand he has two truck loads, two, two bus loads down here tonight. I see them in the distance, get on back for John King. Because we have matured with John King. We as a people have nurtured John King. And John King has come from the Calypsonian to the man that he is today, to the youth leader that he is today, today, to the community worker that he is today. And I want you to put your hands together and welcome John King to the stage. Alb Thorne, Tyron Lovell, Kerry Simmons, candidate Adrian Medic Ford, and party leader Mia Amor Motley. Don't despair, Christchurch. There's a medic in the house. The Barbados Labour Party at the Briar Hall playing field this Sunday at 7 p.m.
The Barbados Labor Party moves to Christchurch West Central at the Briar Hall Plain Field near the Graham Hall Roundabout this Sunday at 7 p.m. Come here in our rear, Ryan Strawn, Wilfred Abrams, Dr. William Dugate, Ralph Thorne, Tyron Lovell, Kerry Simmons, candidate Adrian Bennett Ford, and party lead. A fantastic, a fantastic night. St. John, I can't hear you, St. John. I love what I'm seeing. You're an awesome, awesome sight. I don't know about the rest of you, but I can feel a breeze of chains blowing in St. John. It is a beautiful parish with beautiful people. And I feel, I feel even more special being up here tonight because we share the same name, the awesome St. John. And yours truly, John King. But let me tell you this. My relationship with this parish is long and deep-rooted. I attended the Lord School just up the road there. And I will walk from Church Village every day going to school. Through Cliff, Guinea, and Messiah Street. And that was my daily trek for my education. But for those of you who are old enough to know the people in St. John, you will remember me not as the Calypsonian, don't laugh, but they will remember me as the break dancer, the man that could dance real pretty. <laughs> and I used to be at every possible fear that you could think of in this parish. And we would go and dance at God Hill Social Center or over in society. And then later on in life, you knew me as the Calypsonian, and you embraced me because myself and Tony Waldron made crop over, light up from year to year with great music. But tonight, I ain't come here to reminisce about the good old days. I ain't come to talk about John King. I ain't come to talk about Mia Motley. I ain't come to talk about Charles Griffin. Listen, tonight is about the people of St. John. Look, I want you to give me permission to talk plain. I want permission to talk plain. Thank you to the people of St. John all across this country. People have been making mock sport of you. They are saying that you had not one, but two prime ministers. I have absolutely nothing to show for it. They are saying that. And they are also saying that the only body that had a prime minister other than you, prior to this one that they got, was St. Peter. And if you look at the development that happened in St. Peter under the Barbados Labour Party led by Owen Alpha, it is time that you wake up and know who come to work for you. You got to wake up. The difference is that Mr. Arthur was bred and born in St. Peter. So therefore, he understood his responsibility to the people of that constituency. You keep bringing people from all about and putting them in here to run because they think that you ain't got no sense. But tonight, tonight, the Barbados Labour Party is bringing to you a homegrown man in the form of Charles Griffith. A man that has been born, man. He born in the womb of this parish of St. John. He was nurtured by you, the people of St. John. 
and he is a dedicated and committed man. He is going to give you the type of representation that you deserve. He's going to give you the representation that you deserve. But I know you've been starving for it for over 60 years. This man is a servant of this community. He is your community servant. And let me tell you something. Community service is not servitude, man. Let me get it right. You either love it or you don't. You either have a passion for it or you don't. You have to truly, truly care about people. You got to be able to listen to people. You got to be able to learn from people and to have a genuine caring and want to help people. This is Charles Griffith. Look, let me show you what a great man that you have in case you don't know in Charles. Despite everything that the pundits talk about how St. John unwinnable and they predict that the Barbados Labour Party will never win St. John. Would you believe that Charles still put himself up to the challenge to come to represent you? A lot of people run. A lot of people run. We can get to that soon. A lot of people run, but Charles came. You know why? Because he has your best interests at heart. But look what's been happening over the last couple of weeks. Big Bacchanal. All kind of Dems want to get in St. John. Because the field is a CFC. But let me tell you, the people of St. John something. No more come years in here. You need somebody from St. John who understands your problems and feels your pain to represent you. So that if the Democratic Labour Party bring George Pilgrim up here at all, I want you to give the belly up here if you think you're going. Give the belly. That's what I tell you. Count a minute. Don't come and make me laugh and support at you. But the thing is this. Your former parliamentary representative, and I say a former because I still confuse. And I confuse. Is she running for St. John or has she been run out of St. John? Somebody got to tell me because I don't know. What's the real story? I don't know which one it is, but there is one thing, St. John, that I have no fear of telling you tonight. That for the time that she was your representative, she has done absolutely nothing for any one of you. And if I tell you lies, I will get them off of the stairs now and go home. She has done absolutely nothing for you. But I know, I know as Santia alluded to earlier, why the Dems sent her up here in the time that they sent her up here. And I understand why at the time you open your arms, you open your homes, you open your hearts, and you welcome her with open arms. But I also know why she is also fed up as hell with this useless, wild, reckless, and indifferent bunch posing as a government that we call the Democratic Labour Party. I know why she fed up. Because just like everybody in this audience, just like the rest of Barbados, none of us can take five more years of the Dems. So Mara, Mara, let me say to you, with the greatest of sincerity and from the bottom of my heart, I understand why you would want to distance yourself from this particular law. I understand. I believe that you have done the right thing. 
because nobody by nobody wants to go down with the SSDLP. If you don't know what the SSDLP is, it is the sinking ship called the Democratic Labour Party. With a captain by the name of Rondell Stewart. Oh yes. It's a sinking ship. Look, ask yourself a question, St. John. When has any real development taken place in this constituency? I want, I want you, uh, look, uh, answer me. What has taken place in the last 10 years? The last 20 years? The last 30 years? The last 40, 50, 60 years? So if your answer is nothing, St. John, what are you prepared to do? Have your young people been given any real opportunities to advance themselves? But, but, but then if your answer is no, you know what you have to do. You need to come out in your numbers and vote for Charles Griffith. Look, every single vote for Charles Griffith is a vote for better roads. It's a vote for better schools. It's a vote for better infrastructure. It's a vote for agricultural programs. It's a vote for better transportation system. It is a vote for a better standard of living. In fact, let me tell you, in case you don't know, under the Barbados Labour Party, it is a better life for everybody. A much better life. But let me repeat, Charles is a community man. He is a roots man. He's a down-to-earth man like me. He's a man who can sit down with kings and queens and not lose the common touch. He is a decent son of the soil. Griff is a man that you know personally. A man you can trust. A man who has proven by his life's work in this constituency that he ain't looking for the fame, he ain't looking for the money, he ain't looking for the fat pension. The only thing that Charles Griffith wants to do is to make wrong things right for the people of St. John. My friends, you have to embrace a candidate who will remain with you long after the dust settles on the upcoming election. There will be no empty promises, no handouts, no short-term giveaways will get you anywhere. They cannot and will not meet your long-term goals or needs. You, the good people of St. John, must choose a party with the strongest leader, a party with a firm vision, a party of action, the right mix of experience and fresh cutting edge ideas. You have to put in a party that has rescued Barbados from the brink of disaster time after time after time after time after time after time. After time. You must also choose a party that has shown its commitment to your well-being by rubbing shoulders with you. Not one that does grease palms, man. Your vote, St. John, your vote is your voice. You got to stand together and speak loudly. You got to speak clearly. You got to speak decisively so that there is no misunderstanding as to who and what you want as representation. I want you 
Whenever the bell is rung, ring that bell. Whenever the bell is rung, I want you to show, settle. Whenever the bell is rung, I want the good people of St. John to show our Prime Minister from their Stuart what creating history is all about. It ain't about talking about how you can call it election long after the time and that is creating history. Yes, it will create history, but we want positive history to be created, not nonsense. So therefore, if you want positive history that not only Barbados, but the rest of the Caribbean and the rest of the world will speak about, the only thing you have to do is go to the polls, come out and vote. From four roads, come out and vote. Venture, come out and vote. Martins Bay, come out and vote. College Savannah, come out and vote. Pool, come out and vote. Clifton Hall, come out and vote. But when you vote, vote for the leadership of Mia and more Martin and create history by making her the first female Prime Minister of Barbados. That is the kind of history that you want. You also want to ensure that Charles Griffith is your next duly elected representative for the constituency of St. John. That is the kind of history that you want. And for the young people, the old people, the rich people, the poor people, the white people, the black people, the mixed race people, the people that born in St. John or the people that now come. The Barbados Labour Party is going to take care of you. The Barbados Labour Party is extending an invitation to you, the people of St. John, to join us in this restoration program. We are opening our arms and extending an invitation to you to join us on restoring Barbados to the levels that we once knew. Don't be stubborn. Don't be hard ears. Think what is in the best interest of you, your children, your grandchildren, and this beloved country that we call Barbados. My friends, we've got a lot of work to do. We can do it. You're right. You're right. There's a lot of things to clean up. But the Barbados Labour Party cannot do it without you, St. John. We need you. And I'm not too proud to beg. Lots of women will tell you that, but none is there. I am begging you tonight, St. John. I'm not too proud to beg. I'm begging you to open your arms to my friend, Charles Griffith. Give him that vote. Give the Barbados Labour Party the opportunity to come in and show you what true representation is all about. And together, as one Barbados, we will rescue this sinking, this sinking ship. We will take it to higher heights. And whenever it is done, even Frondel Stewart will benefit because when we get in power, his pension will stretch a little longer under the Barbarian Labour Party. So ladies and gentlemen, have no fear. We have the team for the times. We have the leadership for the times. We have you and your best interests at heart. So whatever you do, St. John, remember, you have an important part to play in this upcoming election. Do what you need to do. Make Charles Griffith your representative. Make Mia Moore the first female Prime Minister of Barbados.
And when you do that, together, once again, we will walk as proud barbarians. I thank you. May God bless you. And whatever you do, vote BLP. Vote for a better life. Thank you. Good night. Ring the bell. Ring the bell. Frundel. We are going to create history, St. John. We are going to bring this seat back to the Barbados Labour Party. We are going to make Mia Motley the first female prime minister of this country. And you see that last speaker, St. Philip West, we are going to topple the pit bull. You see the caliber of people that we have in the Barbados Labour Party. Nobody can say John King is just a singer no more. John King, the, the commanding the platform of the Barbados Labour Party. Huh? Give him a round of applause. Because you see, it is that energy that must come to the people of this country. It is that fire that must be in your belly to be able to represent your country and to do it at the highest level. It is to be able to set the examples for the people, for the generations to come. That is what the Barbados Labour Party stands for. And you, the people of St. John, must be able to hold us to account if we falter from what we have promised to you. Because you have a Democratic Labour Party administration. That elected had had mara thompson as its representative for you the people of st john but you know when it came to legislation in the house of parliament she could contribute nothing in relation to things that would affect you many of you are farmers in this community not a word from mara thompson in relation to the issues of pretty larceny that many of you could get lock up if you have goods in your car, you cannot produce a certificate to be able to prove where it has come from. Not a word from your representative. So I am not surprised that she has bowed out of elective politics because she knows she cannot come back to face the electorate in St. John again. She understands that she has disappointed the people and she can no longer mount a political platform to tell the people that all is well. And that she has the backing of the Democratic Labour Party to do anything in this constituency. But you see, in the Barbados Labour Party, we have some bright minds. We have some people with some intellectual ability. We have some people that can walk amongst the people and understand what is necessary in terms of legislation to be able to bring life and a platform for people to be able to live in this country. We have attorney generals that have served this country and served this country well. And we have a gentleman that I want to bring to the stage, Dale Marshall, a former attorney general of this country, that you have never heard nothing bad spoken about this man. You never heard anything got carried away by Dale Marshall. You never heard that he was a corrupt politician because he understood service to country and putting country first. Dale Marshall is a man that many of us as young people can turn to in the Barbados Labour Party. Dale is focused, laser-like in his approach to legislation. And if there's always one voice in the room that is prepared to tell you, no, you need to go and come back again, it is Dale Marshall. Mara Thompson could not do that for you. Members of the Democratic Labour Party have brought legislation that has impacted on every single person in this country. They have fouled up legislation after legislation. But I'm proud to bring to the stage a man whose record is second to none, Dale Marshall, the representative for St. John, and who will no doubt be the next representative, sorry, for St. Joseph. The Barbados Labor Party moves to Christchurch West Central at the Briar Hall Plain Field near the Graham Hall Roundabout. Good night, good night, good night. We are red and we are ready. We are red and we are. We are red and we are. I don't, I don't even know if I have to say very much. I, I so enjoyed listening to my friend John King that I, I almost feel that I don't belong on this platform with him. John, let me thank you. And I know that the same success that you wish our comrade Charles 
is sure to come your way. When I say that we are red and we are ready, it is not just about being ready for an election. The Barbados Labour Party is ready to run this country in the way that it needs to be run. You know, everybody wants to be in charge. I remember in 2008, David Thompson wanted very much to be Prime Minister of this country. And his cabinet colleagues felt that running a government was easy. And one of them said, remember who? That we could have a fishing agreement over a bowl of soup. But everything looks easy until you stand in the position of responsibility. And the Democratic Labour Party has let every single citizen and resident of this country down so badly that it is a disgrace. But we are in St. John tonight, in my view, not to talk about Errol Barra, not to talk about David Thompson, not to talk about his widow, Mara Thompson, we are here in St. John to talk about the future. Because every single one of those individuals represent what is past about this constituency. You know, somebody told me as I was arriving tonight that I don't have to say what the Dems did not do in St. John. Because every single person in St. John can see for themselves that not a single thing has been done. So we don't have to talk about that. And therefore we don't have to talk about the past history of neglect. Because the St. The John people have felt it and have lived it every single day for many years. What I want to tell the people of St. John is your time has come. The time has come for St. John to look to the future. So that is what we are about tonight, looking to the future. And the future that I speak about is a future that sees a brilliant young man named Charles Griffith representing this constituency in the House of Assembly. I have never met a finer human being a person with more generosity of spirit. I have never met a more soft-spoken man but a strong man. I have never met an individual who wakes up so, with so much enthusiasm for the people of St. John as with Charles Griffith. He is one of you. Charles was born in Edgecliff. He has lived in this constituency and he has seen his life's work as the mission of reforming the lives of the young men and women in this constituency. All across Barbados, you will find examples of individuals who reach a certain position and the first thing they do is clear out. Very easy to clear out. They rub, they, they shake the dust off their feet and they head to Christ Church or St. Michael or someplace else. Not Charles. Charles' life work has remained the young men and women of St. John. So much so, so much so, that when David Thompson came to office, he realized that there was a powerhouse of a young man in St. John named Charles Griffith. And he realized that Charles was an exemplar of what true representation should be. And he had him moved. He had him transferred. But that did not daunt this young man. He spent, <laughs> if you want buses, Chief. <laughs> All right, I can get the buses just now. Charles continued his commitment to the people of this constituency and has taken it upon himself to devote the rest of his life to your representation. 
I cannot think of a finer human being than Charles Griffith, who deserves the vote of the members of this constituency. It is disgraceful that with an election only weeks away, that the people of St. John do not know and cannot say who is going to be representing them from the side of the Democratic Labour Party. It is disgraceful. Now that tells you, that tells you one of two things. It tells you that they do not care enough about this constituency or it should tell you that they take this constituency for granted. You see, they so believe that the people of St. John will always vote Democratic Labour Party that it doesn't matter that they can declare a candidate days before that the people of St. John don't need to have a say in who runs. That once more, a successor is going to be anointed. The people of St. John deserve better than that. The people of St. John deserve to know all like now who it is that the Dems are going to be sending because you have to make an informed choice. But this failing, this disgraceful failing of the Dems and of Frondell Stewart is symptomatic of everything that they do in Barbados and everything that they have done in Barbados for the last 10 years. I represent the adjoining constituency of St. Joseph. In fact, some of you might know that part of the parish of St. Joseph forms part of my constituency. The constituencies not only share a common boundary, but people in St. John walk through St. Joseph to catch a bus when we used to have a bus. People in St. Joseph, people in St. Joseph have wives and girlfriends and children in St. John. These two areas are bound not just by geography, but by blood and kindredness. So I know what the people of St. John have to experience. In fact, it, is, it should be to the embarrassment of the Democratic Labour Party that people who live on this side of St. John, when they see me, they say, Mr. Marshall, can you do something about the roads? I said, but you know, in my constituency, they said, never mind, I want you to do something about the roads. Now, that should tell you something. Some people believe that politics is about high sense and gimmicks and strategies and those kinds of things. But I have found that politics, and I know that my friend Cynthia agrees with me, politics is about doing the things that make people's lives better. We get elected to parliament, but politics is not about being in parliament. Being in parliament is where you go to debate. But you do that for a few hours, one day a week. And in fact, under the Democratic Labour Party, sometimes months would pass. And we don't go to Parliament. Politics is not about Parliament. Politics is about representing the day-to-day -day needs of the people who elect you. Plain and simple. It is about making poor people's lives better. It is about stopping poor people from being poor. It is about the simple things that you and I need in order to live a fruitful life. It is about roads. It is about being able to go into the bus stand and catch a bus. Now, you know, I always say that sometimes we don't connect the dots. There are some people who believe that the issue of poor bus service is just a question of how long you have to wait in the bus stand. That is a part of it. But you know what? It will hurt anybody's heart to see an elderly individual standing up at a bus stop in St. John for over two hours. Sometimes those individuals have high blood pressure. Sometimes they have diabetes, all kinds of ailments. Sometimes they are just plain old tired, but they must wait for hours to get where they have to go. And getting back, it's not just about what time you get a bus to get home. 
It is about the fact that until you reach home at 8 o'clock at night, you cannot even begin to be a proper parent for your child. What mother or father who goes into a bus stand at 4.30, 5 o'clock and waits three hours for a bus can think about reaching home and sitting down to do homework with a child about to do common entrance? Who can do it? They have to start by fixing a meal. Five hours now. That is what Barbados has come to. The transport board has 274 buses. But I believe that today we probably only had 50 on the road. 274 buses. But only about 50 on the road. Barbadians, you know, there was a time... There was a time when Barbadians could say, man, I, I can get from here to there. The bus service in Barbados was the marvel of the Caribbean. People used to be amazed, amazed at our communications network, at how we used to get around. But we have now reached the point where of 274 buses, less than 25% of them are working on any given day. So the point I'm making is it's not just about how long you have to wait for a bus on an evening. It is also about how you can relate to your family life. That is four hours or more in a day that you have lost. Two to get to work. Two or three to get back home. And somebody will say that you are a public servant but you're not productive. How can you be productive? These are the issues that I know the people of St. John have been facing. St. John, the time has come for you to look to your future, not the past. Look to your future, a future with Charles Griffith and the Barbados Labour Party. Do not fool yourself. This constituency suffers from slippage because part of St. John is in the Scotland district. The Democratic Labour Party has done absolutely nothing to deal with it. This constituency was also, and may still continue to be, significantly affected by the water shortage. Who? Who in the Democratic Labour Party came to say, St. John, we are sorry? They didn't come to St. Joseph. The Prime Minister said, well, you know, the people of Barbados are still going to work, and they're still going to school, and the television still works, and CBC still shows at night, so our life must be good. Our life must be good. But at no time did he feel it necessary to come to the people of this constituency and give them the assurance that they're going to work to make things better. We have a South Coast that is now featured in a disreputable way in the international media. I got a copy of an article today published by the London Telegraph. And it speaks to the decay of our country. But the Prime Minister is busy talking about making history. That is history too. That is history too. Can you imagine that a week after the people say that Barbados is the finest tourism destination in the world, they also say that we are the filthiest. The two things do not add up. We have a government that has long stopped caring about the day-to-day -day needs of Barbadians. And if you reach a stage where, as a government, you do not care, then you are at the point where you should no longer occupy the halls of power in our country, plain and simple. I well recollect members of the Democratic Labour Party speaking about Barbadians with contempt. With contempt. We are now back to the you can like it or lump it days. You remember those days? The Democratic Labour Party is holding Barbadians in contempt because they do not believe that you and I should know when our date at the polls is going to be. But for him, it's no issue. I understand that he's planning to go to a big conference in London in two weeks' time and that the High Commission is planning on whining and dining him and fetting him at your expense. And that is his priority. I well remember 
going into 2008, I think they had a CARICOM, a big CARICOM meeting. I went off and said, I am not going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. I have to face the electorate in a matter of months, and my priority, therefore, has to be how can I defend my stewardship? So, Frandell Stewart, you have to face the electorate of Barbados within a couple of months. And I want you to begin to defend your stewardship. If you wonder why I'm silent, it's because I'm waiting to hear if you've got anything to say. But, but we know how that Prime Minister works. He does not believe that the people of Barbados are deserving of receiving communications from him. You know, the disgraceful thing too is that when they came to power in 2008, they said we we're going to have weekly press conferences after cabinet. You remember that, Sinti? Weekly press conferences after cabinet. They began hot and sweaty by keeping community meetings in every single parish in Barbados on a Sunday. And CBC had to show it from start to finish. But no, you hear nothing from the government except a barrage of insults and innuendo as far as the Barbados Labour Party is concerned. So a Prime Minister is not content is not content to say to the people of this country, this is what I have done. Instead, he and his following want to say bad things about our leader. They want to say bad things about Liz Thompson. They want to say bad things about Cynthia Ford and George Payne and Dale Marshall because as far as they are concerned, that is what this election is now about. This election for them is now a curse fest. But we, we are not cursing anybody. We don't have to curse anybody. As far as we are concerned, this election is about whether the Democratic Labour Party has fulfilled the promise that they made to the people of this country last election and the one before. Now, somebody, somebody leaked our manifesto. But you know what? You know what? The difference between us and them is that we are committed to the things that we publish in our manifesto. Well, for them, a manifesto is just a document that they put out as a matter of public relations. So they have leaked our manifesto, but that is all right. You don't hear the barbers, their party running around frantic, oh Lord, our manifesto out there. No. Our manifesto is a document, even in its draft form, that is full of substance and promise. And I invite each of you to read it. It is all over social media. It's no secret now. It isn't complete. But I want to say to you that even at this stage, the Barbados Labour Party would welcome your views. You know why? Because we are a party that is serious about consultation, and we are a party that is serious about listening to the voice of the people who elect us. How can we serve the people if we do not listen to their voice? Plain and simple. You know, the Democratic Labour Party politicians like to talk. Don Villain is talk, 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 talk. Chris Sinkler talk, talk, talk. Dennis Lowe talk, talk, talk. But not a single one of them spares a minute to listen. Plain and simple. Now I want to tell you that that is a fundamental difference between the Barbados Labour Party and Democratic Labour Party, you know. We have always believed in the power of consulting with the people. Plain and simple. So when people tell you, man, the B's and the D's are the same thing, uh, with due respect, that is a person who either does not understand or ain't wake up yet. Okay? Because as a political institution, the Barbados Labour Party stands for the highest ideals, while as far as the Democratic Labour Party is concerned, they are in a race to reach the bottom. The Barbados Labour Party believes in listening to the voice of the people, while as far as the Dems are concerned, the people must listen to their voice. The Barbados Labour Party believes in improving the lives of the people we are expected to serve, while the Democratic Labour Party believes otherwise. But the proof is in the pudding. Ten years ago is not too far back 
for any of you to remember that Barbados was the number one developing country in the world. Ten years ago is not too far back for you and I to remember that we were so, we were so, we had succeeded so much. We had reached such a pinnacle that as far as our Caribbean brothers and sisters are concerned, Barbados was the place to live and work. I will remember that there was a spate of kidnappings in Trinidad and the Trinidadians said, we can't take it no more. We are coming to Barbados. Barbados used to be a place of safety and sanctuary. Not so more. Not so anymore. How many, how many firearm shootings have we had for the year? How many did we have last year? The lives of our young men are being destroyed through guns, through violence. The principal of Dodds in July of last year said that four of the young men who had been killed in the last six weeks had passed through his hands at Dodds. I believe John King will be able to confirm that. Four of the young men shot and killed in the previous six weeks had passed through Dodds. But do you think that you have an attorney general who will be listening to that voice? I'm not saying he's an idiot. I am saying that everything shows us that he does not care about what happens in his constituency or St. John or St. Joseph or in any one of them. Now I'm speaking to you from a platform in St. John. But I could have been speaking to you in St. Lucy. I could have been speaking to you in St. Michael. Because not a place in Barbados has been spared the heavy whip and the heavy hand of destruction from the dens. So it isn't that St. John alone is bad. No, I have to tell you that it is, it is a serious disappointment that St. John is in the state it is in. Because, I mean, John mentioned Owen Arthur. He's not with us anymore. But the point is this. Owen Arthur felt that his first duty after taking care of Barbados was taking care of St. Peter. And I feel that my first duty after taking care of Barbados is taking care of St. Joseph. And Cynthia Ford feels that her first duty after taking care of Barbados is taking care of St. Thomas. And that is the point about our political stewardship. Because Barbados as a whole is the most important thing for our attention and our interest. But after that, the people who elected us. Plain and simple. So I could have been speaking to you from any part of Barbados. Because every single part of Barbados is in a state of decay and destruction. Simply because we have had a government that have not had a clue in the last 10 years. Now... You know, one country can be so unlucky. One country can be so unlucky. In Grenada, there was an election two days ago. And the people of Grenada were so pleased with the functioning of that prime minister and his party that they not only elected them again, they gave him every single seat in Grenada. The poster said, that there was a swing towards a government. Now, do the people of Barbados feel that way? Well, you, you feel that the Barbados Left Party should get all 30. But I'm really asking a different question. I'm asking you if anybody in Barbados has so much confidence and satisfaction in the Dems that they are prepared to re-elect them to office. I do not believe that they do. But in a neighboring country, our economy, the economies in Grenada, in St. Lucia, in St. Vincent, all of those economies are prospering. All of those economies are growing. Barbados is the sinking ship. In all of those countries, the governments are being re-elected with a tremendous vote of confidence from their people. And I can't find a single Barbadian who has any confidence in the Dems. Now... That speaks to the level of demoralization that the Democratic Labour Party has inflicted on Barbados. But it didn't happen overnight. 
It happened year after year after year for 10 whole years. So it isn't only St. John that has to look to the future. It is the whole of Barbados that you want you to applaud the bus. This is the first one I had in how many hours? I'm not going to get distracted. In the same way that the people of St. John need to look to the future, the people of Barbados also need to look to the future. We can spend a lot of time, we can spend a lot of time on the wrongs of the Dems over the last 10 years. But I want to tell you that I want you to focus your eyes ahead. Don't look at your feet. Do not look behind you. Focus your eyes ahead and you will see a team of people wearing red. A team of people who are red and who are ready. Mia Motley has distinguished herself as being one of the finest minds anywhere in the Caribbean. Plain and simple. She has an ability to communicate with the highest and the lowest. She reaches out her hand to lift you up. And she reaches out her hand so that you may lift her up. There's a difference between leadership and being in charge. Frandell Stewart is in charge. Just like Chris Singler is in charge of the economy. There's a difference between leadership and being in charge. And I am a part of a political institution with a tremendous history, but that understands that leadership is about how you gather your people around you. Amir has been doing an amazing job in gathering her people around her. Plain and simple. And I want to say to you that the confidence... The confidence that you once put in the Barbados Labour Party, the time has come for you to restore that confidence to us again. As impossible as you might think things are, the Barbados Labour Party can turn things around. In 1994, things seemed impossible then. As I canvassed, Democrat Labour Party supporters were telling me, nah, I would have got her. When I got a rough time, then when I win. I say, well, thank you for knowing that we are going to win. But I want you to know that we have been there before. And we've done it before. And you are able to put that confidence in a team of Barbados Labour Party people whose promise to you is that from day one we will go to work, pull up our sleeves, and deal with the business of making Barbados better. We know what it is like to have been great. And it will take us some time to get back there. But from day one, every single one of us, every single member of Team Red and Team Ready, will be focused on a single thing, making Barbados better. Now, Charles is a valuable member of this team. Charles has been told that winning St. John is impossible. But I have told Charles, Charles, every day you can do one impossible thing. Every day of your life you can do one impossible thing. And on election day, somebody is going to be whispering to you, Charles, what you are about to do is impossible. But I want to say to Charles that I plan on coming across Wilson Hill and making my way to the St. John County Station and standing alongside Charles Griffith when he is declared the winner of the constituency of St. John for the Barbados Labour Party. It may seem impossible to the Dems, but you know what? Everything is impossible for the Dems. It has been impossible for them to rescue our economy. It has been impossible for them to give our young men and women dreams. It has been impossible for them to restore Barbados to pride of place. The only thing that they have been successful in doing is taking us lower and lower and lower. I remember at, um, a few years ago, Frandell Stewart went to his annual conference, and you remember Leroy had a song, Gadong, Gadong, Gadong. Ga and Frandell went on stage, and Frandell said that the Barbados Labour Party 
That, that was our mission statement. Gadong, 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 gadong. But what Frondel Stewart forgot to tell the people is that he is the leader of the band. And the members of the band are the members of the Democratic Labour Party cabinet. And Gadong, Gadong, Gadong represents everything that they have done to our country. But we are going up, we are looking to the future, and we are going to leave the Dems down there. Good night. God bless you. That's right, people, we are going to leave the Dems down there because St. John deserves better. St. John deserves better, let me hear you. That's what we're talking about. You know, it is a good thing to be able to be part of a Barbados Labour Party um, that understands that you have to mentor the younger people who are coming up through the ropes. It is good to be part of a Barbados Labour Party administration that has people like Dale Marshall representing St. Joseph in the rural areas. And the next person who I'm going to bring to the stage, George Payne as well, who represents St. Andrew. Because these are the individuals who are at the forefront, and people like Cynthia Ford and St. Thomas, who are at the forefront of being able to mentor Charles in relation to his stewardship of what is to come in the constituency of St. John. We can only be as good as sometimes the people who help to show us the way forward in order to represent you, the people of this constituency. And you see, the next speaker I'm going to bring to the stage, George Payne, is a man that I have tremendous respect for. When he is present, he makes his presence felt on every single member of the Barbados Labour Party. He is always willing to give his advice and his guidance. He's going to tell you when you are going wrong. But you know what? You can always expect sincerity from George Payne. And one of the things that George Payne has shown me over the course of the last couple of years of his representation of St. Andrew, is that he is prepared to defend his constituents to the bitter end. He can speak in the same way that Charles can speak about the neglect from a Democratic Labour Party administration towards the people of these constituencies in the rural areas. And it seems as though sometimes the people in the rural areas are being victimized at the hands of the Democratic Labour Party administration. The only difference between Cynthia and, and Dale and George is that they are Barbados Labour Party members who are representing those areas. But St. John does not have an excuse because you had the Queen. You had the former Prime Minister's wife as your representative. And still, all of you continue to say that you have the level of representation that you deserve and now on the eve of an election they intend to thrust at you whoever they may but I want the people of this constituency to understand that people like George Payne who I'm going to bring up here now is a gentleman of the highest class he is able to direct and command the troops giving support to the leader of the Barbados Labour Party to be able to take this country forward. And together with this team that we have of combined individuals who have leadership abilities, who have demonstrated their experience, and certainly being able to have a passion to be able to serve, I say to the people of this constituency of St. John, give Charles Griffith the opportunity to continue to be mentored by people like George Payne. Charles Griffith, you have served this country well. You have been a proud son of the soil of St. John. When I look at the things like the, the Project Oasis that you have been instrumental in bringing to the fore in this country and ensuring that young people have been able to get off of the block, that young people have been able to pursue their dreams. You have served at the macroeconomic level, but you have also served at the community level. You have engaged your people. And I believe that you can only get better by having the caliber, caliber of people like George Payne and St. Andrew to be able to hold your hand and to walk with you in communities in St. John to be able to bring home the seat for the Barbados Labour Party. So I want you to welcome on stage the chairman of the Barbados Labour Party, the senior of the Barbados Labour Party, George Walton. Ryan Strawn, Wilfred Abrams, Dr. William Dugate, Ralph Thorne, Tyron Lovell, Kerry Simmons, candidate Adrian Medic Ford, and party leader Gentlemen, Mia Amor Motley. For a minute, I wasn't sure who she was speaking about, but I had to settle, and um, finally, when she called the name, I knew that she meant 
the chairman of the Barbados Labour Party. I never expected that I would have been here addressing the meeting at this time. Um, I had a bet with Jerome Walker in, this, in, I think it was in September last year. And the basis of that bet was that by March, uh, Mayor Motley would be the Prime Minister of Barbados. Um, that was my bet. Uh, uh, Jerome, actually, Jerome actually said that the, the Prime Minister would have been chosen by then, but I felt that the election would have been in December. Um, <clears throat> I, 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 I shudder to tell you what, um, what was my side of the bet. But I, I could not believe that a prime minister could keep a country in waiting for this long. And Jerome's, Jerome's bet um, was that if, if the election is not called or rather, if in March the election is not called, he would make a proposal to Mara Thompson to marry her. My side of the bet was $10,000. But Jerome was hoping that she would refuse the bet. It so happened that as you know, the election is called at this time. And I'm waiting to see after the election what Jerome will do. Because in any event, he is hoping that um, Mara would refuse his, his proposal. Um, you could imagine um, Jerome and Mara Thompson walking up the aisle. Uh, what an what a odd couple. I, I spent a, a long time in the constituency in the 2011 and the 2000, 2011 by election and the 2013 general election. And I must say that um, we were somewhat shattered by the results of those two elections. We were shattered because while we expected that the Democratic Labour Party would have won the election, we never expected that we would have lost by that margin, to be honest with you. Um, this is the second occasion in, in a week that I have addressed a meeting in St. John. And those of you who would have been at the first meeting would recall that we had the wrong Griffith. But seriously, notwithstanding the results of those two elections, I am predicting that Charles Griffith will be the member of parliament for the constituency of St. John whenever the election is called. It is going to be a shock, shock victory. Um, I must tell you that people are so fed up with the people of St. John. I've canvassed with, with Charles. Sometimes I, 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 I wonder whether or not the people are fooling me to be honest with you. Because most of the areas that I have canvassed, I would say 60%, 30% um, is the highest that we could get for the candidate for St. John. I mean, and, I mean, I, and I've, can, I've canvassed in more than one areas, and in many, in, in, on occasions, what I have done is that I have canvassed by myself so that the, I wouldn't um, be misled into the people fooling me because um, Charles was there. Uh, you know, so I have to be guided by what I have seen. And I'm telling you that come whenever the election is called, Charles Griffith will be elected to the House of Assembly as a member of Parliament for St. John. I will, I will tell you a little bit about that later. I will just um, say that um, here again, I mean, Jerome is a betting man. I don't, I've never seen him in Marhill Street. But he is a betting man. And his bet to me was that if Charles win, he would spend a whole night naked on the top of a Lara Court. Well, I am waiting. I hope, I hope 
I hope that he carries out that bet. But there's a wind of change um, going through the entire Barbados. And that wind, wind of change in St. John, seriously. You've heard um, the previous speakers speak about the credentials of, of Charles. I mean, Charles is an amazing candidate, no two ways about it. We, when we started this campaign, we never thought. I mean, we knew that Charles had won the nomination. But we never thought that Charles was such an excellent candidate. You, you, ha you only have to hear him speak. You only have to engage him. You only have to hear people speak about him. You only have to hear his, his students. And when they talk about his students, the people who he mentored on the basketball field, the youth, the young people that he has dealt with, and you would think that they are speaking about a saint. And as I said before, I mean, he has this presence. He has a presence that when you see him, if you don't know him, you have to ask, who oh, 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 is that gentleman? So ladies and gentlemen, the, the, the wind of change that I'm speaking about has been bolstered by the inclusion of Charles into our ranks. It has been like a, a breath of fresh air to the people of St. John. A candidate who has lived and worked among you for his entire life. A candidate who understands the passion of the people of St. John for good, honest governance, a comfortable standard of living, and above all else, a pride in their heritage. A candidate imbibed with a yearning from his elementary school days to represent this constituency and by extension to serve this country at the highest level. Like the successful coach and manager, that was his want. He secretly crafted his political journey to ensure that he was well grounded in the community. Visibility was kept to a minimum. Emphasis on teamwork, commitment, perfection, and excellence ensured that he was always singled out by his charges as the man for any challenge. The man for any challenge. Tonight, we are witnessing another page in the chronicles of his biggest challenge to date. But what is responsible for this wind of change? It is a, a contradiction to the historical political leanings of this constituency, but it is rooted in the betrayal and disrespect by a political operative in the person of Mara Thompson that was thrust on the people of St. John who were caught off guard in the aftermath of the mourning of their favorite son. And it was not just once, it was twice. Now when you look at it, Mara Thompson, Mara Thompson, a woman who the people of St. John knew very little about, contested an election in this constituency. I know Barbadians love foreigners. They love foreigners. They love people with accents. They love people from far and out, far and away. And we embraced her. The people of St. John embraced her. Can you imagine that Errol Barrow contested a seat in this constituency, having lost in St. George in 1958? And he won a seat. He won his seat by 50% of the vote. Errol Barrow, 50.05% of the vote. In other words, he barely won. He barely won. He was re-elected under the double-member constituencies. 34% in 1961. 36% in 1966. But can you imagine that the people of Barbados, the people of St. John, embraced Mara Thompson so well 
Now she got 89% of the vote in 1911, in, in, in 2011, sorry, when she contested the seat of this constituency. 89%. 89% of the vote in this St. John constituency. She, she won on the backs of the goodwill of Errol Barrow and of the sympathy of her husband. You can imagine that. 89%. Nowhere, nowhere in the, in, the, in the history of Barbados has anybody won a seat with that, with, with, with that percentage majority. 89%. A record. The other side only got 11%. As a matter of fact, they, they, it, it, that doesn't even necessarily follow because if there are more than one person in the ring, um, obviously that 11% would have been shared with um, among them. But she got 89% of the vote. But there is something called gratitude. There is something called gratitude. And a person should be grateful to the persons who have placed them in a position where they never expected. If somebody do you a favor, you should be at least a little grateful to them. At least a little thank you. You should show some sort of appreciation for what they have done for you. The people of St. John was very, very, very grateful. Tamara Thompson, she did not even, she did not even have the decency to thank the people of St. John. Not the decency to thank the people of St. John. And and what she did immediately after the election was also an insult to the people of St. John. An insult to the former representative Errol Barrow and also to her husband. As far as I'm concerned, they were not, as far as I know, they were not divorced yet, even though they probably might have been planning to. But, but, Mara Thompson, in her first speech after she won that seat, she indicated that her major, major plank of representation in the constituency was to bring development, hear this, to bring development to a long neglected parish. She wanted a seat that was held by two former prime ministers, including her husband. And she could come and say immediately after that she wants to bring as one of her major promises to the constituents, she wants to bring development, which would tend to suggest that there was no such development in that constituency before. Now, I must tell you that you have seen her within the past few weeks and you have seen the, 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 sh her, the shunning of Mara Thompson by her colleagues. But this started, this shunning of Mara Thompson started since 2013 after that election. Her cabinet colleagues were so annoyed, you heard them in the recreation room, they indicated that they would not have anything to do with her. Nothing to do with her. Because she had, br she, she brought, she, she, she brought some disappointment to most of them in the, in the manner in which she treated um, the, the right excellent er Errol Barrow and her husband. So this, this, um, this Mara Thompson actually began her dismissal of the parish of St. John, not in 2018, not a few months ago, but long, long before, uh, before what you are witnessing in the past, in the past few weeks. So, ladies and gentlemen, 
the, the other throwing disappointment in Mara Thompson. Her, the manner in which she dismissed her earlier statement with respect with respect to her denial that she did not plan to run in the upcoming election. I mean, one would have thought that the least she could have done was at least to consult her constituents. She did not even have the decency to have a meeting with her constituents to declare that she was no longer interested in running in this constituency. A woman who had been elected by such a large majority did not even have the dec decency to come back to her constituents to tell them, but look, I do not think that I would be available for whatever reason to be your candidate for, 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 for the next election. That was disrespect. Total disrespect. So ladies and gentlemen, Oh, the Labour Party towards the end of our term. We have the responsibility of managing the type of problems in this country, includes St. John, that would have solved. Were to be done, the Democratic Labour Party forgot in that very entity problems that the people of White Hill faced. It is a sad district being neglected to the point where house land had been acquired for purposes and the people in White Hill are still in a dire need of resettlement. But let me get back to, to Charles. Charles Griffith has represented, has represented this parish well in many respects. He spent about community, mission, youth, or see the people in this for that um, that representation. As chairman of the Barbados Labour Party, when it is over, represented himself, honorable member of Parliament, um, long time he has been there to assure. Talents will be missed, and that he will serve me a motley. Would hope that we see the success of Charles come to. Project Oasis is a project sought to bring the. Charles is joined by individuals. Charles has been able to do it. They don't exist. Prayer to his nomination. Ladies and gentlemen, I bring to you the constituency of St. John. Ladies and gentlemen, I bring to you McDonald Charles Griffith. Thank you. Of it. Now, on. And it is time for change in my politics. Now, my politics, my because people I love. So, children, like I said before, worked in St. John all of my life. I got involved in politics because I believe that it is the right thing for St. John. Relates to the constituency of to my parish to life for almost 20 years. is pushing. There's another area that, as it relates to culture, change. Entrepreneurship is another area. 
high. And one of the ways that unemployment is to use self-employment, entrepreneurship as one of the vehicles to drive the young people and to drive my parish forward. Now, as mentioned before, I've spent like 20 years in youth work, but I'm also concerned about the senior citizens in St. John. At present, we have 797 persons in St. John who are over 75 years. And we must find something in St. John to keep these people occupied in their twilight years. And I am pledging tonight that I will do something about that. We have blocks across St. John that are just there. We have Lot 38 at Cherry Grove. We have Ground Zero, which is adjacent to the community center, the polyclinic at Cleveland. We have Venture Gorillas from Venture. We have BMW in Sherburn. We have the Edgecliff Vigilantes, and nothing is happening on the blocks across St. John, but it will change because there's a reservoir of talent that is laying idle on the blocks that we must tap into in St. John, and I intend to do that. So during the period of time, there's a whole lot of things that must happen in St. John that will change. I was canvassing this week, and I was told that Georgia was in Sherburn. Sorry, predictive text again. George was in Sherburn. And someone asked him, do you know anything about St. John? And he indicated, I will learn St. John. You can't come to St. John and learn St. John two or three weeks before a general election. It is insulting to my people in St. John. Now, I have heard an, a lot of chatter about the fact that the Barbados Labour Party was in power for 14 years and did nothing in St. John. And I want to suggest that for the last 10 years, the Democratic Labour Party was in power and nothing has happened in the parish of St. John. And let me give you a tour of the constituency of St. John. And you tell me what was done in St. John. In College Savannah, we have a situation where there's a community center that is falling apart. And the youngsters in College Savannah, they travel to Bladesill in order to engage in football because the state of the playing field is of such that football can't be played in College Savannah. We have side roads in College Savannah that have fallen apart, and we had a representative in St. John for 10 years, and nothing has happened. At Concept Bay, we have fishermen who are applying their trade in Concept Bay, and the jetty is falling apart, falling apart, and nothing has been done in Concept Bay. In Silly Hall, St. John, we have a situation when rain fall, that residents break out fishing lines because the road turns to rivers and college lands in John. We have no playing facilities for the youngsters, no recreational facilities in college land. At Welch, St. John, we are that close away from cutting off a community because of the poor state of the road. We have, in exist we have about 40 or so residents in Bath land who under the Barbados Labor Party, we put measures in place that persons can purchase lots at $10 a square feet. And Mara Thompson, Mara Thompson went to Welch Village and held a consultation three years ago with the residents of Welch Land in terms of them being able to purchase their lot. Three years later, they're still squatting in Welch Land. The Barbados Labor Party, through me, will fix that. So. I, I am saying that we have situations throughout St. John where there are a number of problems that are constant in St. John and nothing has been done in St. John. At Huddersfield Land, my community, a landowner two years ago gave Mara Thompson a plot of land and said to her, I want you to develop this land as an additional recreation for the youngsters in St. John. I'm suggesting to you tonight, as I stand here, nothing has been done with that piece of land. The Barbados Labor Party on the mere and more mortally, we will fix that in St. John. We have, we have a situation in 
Foster Hall, where I don't know if it is a situation where they believe that the people in Foster Hall must enjoy a roller coaster. The roads are swerving like that in Foster Hall. Nothing has been done for 10 years. Now, I know that resources are scarce, and the infrastructure in St. John is something that we need to take care of, but we will fix that. We have the, the old polyclinic at Gall Hill that is falling apart, and Mara Thompson is doing nothing as it relates to the old polyclinic at St. John. Now, as part of my proposal for St. John, if the engineers can prove that the integrity of the building is strong enough, we will gut the building and make sure that persons in St. John have a facility where we can provide services and goods to the people in St. John at that location. At Gore Hill as well, we have a situation where the hard courts, the, the basketball that I coached up to last year, a Premier League team, the top league in Barbados, and we have the pole on the ground for almost six weeks. The court, there's a need to paint the court. Now, you had a tattoo adjacent the hard court at Gore Hill. And you claim that one of your focus as it relates to St. John is building the capacity of young people and moving youth groups forward. And you're going to allow the court in St. John to remain as is? I am suggesting that we will fix that. Now, one of the things that I want to talk about as well is the fact that over the years, over the years, we have seen persons in St. John who are struggling, absolutely struggling for survival, and nothing has happened. And my daughter would say to me that people are now woke. They're now aware of what is happening. While canvassing with some of my, um, my 300, I call them my 300, my team, I went to an amputee in a particular community, and she said to me, Mr. Griffith, I have supported the Democratic Labour Party all of my life. I'm not going to call the name this board. And, and she said to me, look, Mara would have turned her back on me. And come election time, all I want you to do, Mr. Griffith, is to send a car. Send a car. And I will take care of the rest. And I, I'm suggesting that I am suggesting that this is happening throughout the length and breadth of Barbados. Yeah? So, why I came to public life? I came to public life because, as Comrade Ford is saying, to serve. I came because the blocks across St. John are struggling. We need things that will make them happen. I came to public life because I believe that the people in St. John need representation, representation, quality representation. So I came. I came to public life because a black man a thousand miles away along with his team, who they said it was impossible for it to happen, Barack Obama, and he said, yes, we can. And I'm saying that in St. John tonight with my team, yes, we can. Yes, we can. So I, I, am not, I am not afraid. I am not afraid when they say that this particular journey is impossible because I know that the tide in St. John is changing. The winds of chains are changing. And home drums are beating first this time in St. John. We will do what we have to do. But before I go, before my speech is finished, I want to talk a little bit about fiction. This particular doc document that I'm holding in my hand. The, the Democratic Labour Party 2008 Manifesto. And Youth Manifesto. And I have canvassed in St. John and they told, an uh, old guy told me, where are you going to get the money from? Where are your party is going to get the money from to facilitate the changes that you want to see in Barbados? And I am suggesting that all of the candidates, I'm going to ask my, my campaign manager to put this on my web page. And I want all of the candidates, I want all of the young people in St. John, when the Democratic Labour Party visit you, ask them for 10 years why was nothing in this youth manifesto, why did nothing happen in this? And I, I'm going to share some of the things in this manifesto as it relates to um, the liars and what Patrick said. 
Um, on page two of the document, it is, it, is, it, is, it is stated here that this manifesto is a contract between the great party and the youth of Barbados. This fiction, 10 years, a story. And I, I will share the information because, like I said, no young person in St. John or in Barbados should vote for the Democratic Labour Party because this is a failed document. It is absolutely a failed document. Now, I remember not so long ago, a member of the Democratic Labour Party was attacking Dale. And they gave that particular member an award, recognition. I am suggesting that this is a youth document. And I'm also suggesting that for the last 10 years, Nothing has happened in Barbados to move my young people forward. And I have worked in the corridors of youth work for the last 20 years, so I know exactly what I'm talking about. Now, you have a situation where you're here to say here, to consult extensively with young people through representative organizations. As I stand here tonight, I'm suggesting that youth organizations in Barbados is at an all-time low. Now, this Democratic Labour Party would make you believe that things like summer camps came into being in 2008. Now, they capitalized the camps to a tune of $6 million. For 14 years, under the Barbados Labour Party, we had one single youth commissioner running the camp system across the length and breadth of this country. And we were giving camps a $1,000 startup. But in 2008, Camps were capitalized to the tune of $6 million, and they're falling flat on their face. Now, I'm a youth officer, and one of the things that happened is that the youth officers in Barbados were bastardized under the Democratic Labour Party as operatives of the Barbados Labour Party. And the reality is that every single youth initiative that you can speak to in Barbados today is being fueled by the youth commissioners under the Division of Youth Affairs. Every single one. So when, when there's this belief that everything in youth work would have started in 2008, I am here to dispense that notion and to say that it is a joke. In the document, it, 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 it speaks to strengthening the capacity of youth organizations to reach young people where they're at. And I would have just indicated that there are no youth organizations functioning anymore. The camp system was a voluntary process, and they took the camp system and they started to pay persons to fix, to, to, to deal with the camps. And it is in a worse state than it has ever been in the life of the camp systems in Barbados. And in the document, it speaks to, to strengthening the capacity of families. And there was a mantra not so long ago in St. John about family first. And all of us are aware that family first died a slow death. Because there are no households in St. John that will tell you that they believe that their family was placed first at any point in time under the Democratic Labour Party or in the last 10 years. No family was placed first. So I don't know this family first. It is pure nonsense. And like I said, it is buried and done. Let me continue in the document. And this one is a classic. This is an absolute classic coming from this document. And again, I want to place emphasis that all the young people in Barbados and in St. John, families should ask the Democratic Labour Party what has become of this 2008 youth manifesto. And I'll read for you. The Democratic Labour Party recommits to high quality education in Barbados, free for all from preschool to tertiary. Can you imagine that? In their contract, they're talking about free education from nursery to tertiary education. And these are the same people that have persons in St. John cannot reach their true potential because they cannot afford tuition fee at the university. I was by my branch office yesterday, and I was talking to a young lady who was waiting for three hours for a bus 
And she said to me, I asked because as I usually do, I try to inquire, what are you doing? And she said to me, I was in university, but I had to step out. And I, it wasn't necessary for me to ask why, but I did. And she said, my family and I, we cannot afford tuition fee. We cannot afford to pay university. And I'm saying to you that that is replicated throughout St. John, where young people who want to reach their true potential cannot do it because this wicked government, this liars, and what Patrick said would have caused a whole set of people in Barbados to drop out of university. It is wicked. It is absolutely wicked. And they talk about teaching on page 7. They speak about teaching the subject of enterprise and education and institution. Where is it happening? Where is it happening? Look, I had a project that, because in 2008, let me, let me explain. In 2008, I was moved from St. John after doing the work that I was doing to move the young people in St. John forward. And I staged, I staged a community project that was looking at primary schools. We, we, we have major, major problems in the primary school setting. And the community project dealt with, it was called Moving On. So after 11 plus exam, what we were doing is going into the school and providing young people with conflict resolution knowledge anger management, money management, things that we believe were necessary. And this, this particular administration stopped the program. Stopped the program. And I, I mean, we, we have a case at work where my, my colleagues make fun of, at me because I got an award from the constituency council in, 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 um, in Christchurch. And they made fun because at the time, Rosemary Jones, I'm sorry, Ronald, predictive text, was making, he was making a presentation. He was making a presentation. And for reasons that I will not at this particular time reveal, he refused to shake my hand and present the particular trophy. But I'm, I'm saying, <laughs> I am saying, I am saying that the initiatives that we can bring to St. John, um, we, we, we need to deal with the educational system. We need to move the three primary schools in St. John to a level where we are absolutely pleased with the product that is coming from those particular schools. And I, I have made representation to the the PTA presence in St. John for me to come in and have a talk because I have some ideas in terms of how we can treat to what is going on in St. John. And I believe that it is something that is not outside of the scope of fixing the problems and the issues that are in St. John. All it needs is a little vision. Understand? And, 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 and when I talk about vision, like I say, we have a constituency um, what is it called? Those, those things that they, 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 they put together. The, the constituency council that are interested in doing kite flying and projects of that nature in my constituency of St. John. But it will change. We have a whole set of idle land across St. John. And farming is a viable option for some of the guys on the blocks who are interested in farming. And we will deal with it. We will put persons to work in St. John, entrepreneurship will be the mantra going forward as it relates to how we treat to St. John. And I am saying that my candidacy, my candidacy is about providing a voice for the voiceless. It is about offering quality representation where it was not present before in St. John. I am from St. John. I am from among the people in St. John. And I will remain among the people in St. John. Because they have a vested interest and a responsibility to ensure that this parish moves to a level that the people in St. John can be pleased. And I am saying to you, yes, Marcus, here I am, St. John, every time. And I, I, am, I, am saying, I am saying that I am aware, and you, I know you're aware, 
that the purse of this country is at an all-time low. And it will be a gradual process in terms of how we treat the development in St. John, but believe me, it will come. And it will come because you would have heard from the chairman of the party, and I heard from our political leader, whose vision is something beyond imagination. St. John, I may be stuck nine others in a team that are focused and ready. And we will do what we have to do. In 2008, when we moved away from office, um, we left a lot to rely on. And right now, we're adrift in a little sailboat. You understand? Yes, we are. Um, I mean, the reality is that I, I was home watching a horror nightmare on that street. And I realized that Freddie is nothing compared to his big brother, Frondel Kruger. It's a nightmare. A nightmare in this country. And a nightmare that it didn't last for a night in your dreams. There's a nightmare that lasts for 10 years across the life and breath of this country. But you know what? The Barbados Labour Party, we have Ghostbusters. And we're dealing with it. We're dealing with it. So I, I'm asking, I'm asking tonight the people in St. John to get behind my candidacy. And I mean, try me once. Yeah? I'm asking everybody to vote for Charles Griffith in St. John. Because the reality is, the reality is that nothing has happened and we need change. And this particular candidacy will bring change. I have a team that is working, the Barbados Labour Party. I mentioned I mentioned my, my political leader. I, I mean, and, and you must know the quality of the lady that we call Mayor Amo Mortley. And before, before I go off the stage tonight, this is not John King or Sonia with a special voice, but I want you to help me raise a one-line one song. Because remember what I said, we, 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 when we moved away, there was a luxury liner. And all I want you to sing with me tonight for my political leader is Mia Row the Boat Ashore Hallelujah. Yeah? So, so I, I, I am going to raise this song and I, I want you to join me in relation to that. So, Mia Row the Boat Ashore Hallelujah. Sounding good. Hallelujah. One more. Hallelujah. So you understand. You understand. We, we have a captain. We have a captain on board the boat that the Democratic Labour Party got out to sea adrift. But you know what? We have the necessary hands. We don't need the rest right now. So I, I'm saying to you that I am part, I am pleased to be part of a team, a team of 30 persons who I know the quality, the, the necessary quality to save Barbados. And we are led, we are led by an inspirational leader, a visionary leader that is responsible in part for me walking those same corridors that I talk about for 20 years in youth work. Because in 1995, Mayor Amor Mortley decided that it was necessary to invest in our future by putting together the Division of Youth Affairs. And with 32 youth commissioners, they work across the length and breadth of this beloved country, facilitating the needs and aspirations of young people, the same way that I will facilitate the needs and aspirations of the young people and all of St. John. So I, I am saying to you that despite the fact that they say that this particular journey is impossible, it is not impossible. St. John, here I am. And together, together we will rebuild. Together we will rebuild. So tell Georgia, tell Georgia Pilgrim that home drums will beat first in St. John this time around.
They must be first. They must be first. And I believe, I believe that my innate skill sets couple on forward. To you that I solemnly pledge that I will be here for the distance. I swear I will be here for the distance because this is my parish and this is the parish that I believe can do so much better. Boom drums must but give it it is clear why Mara Thompson has decided to throw in the towel. Tonight you have heard not just that Charles Griffith wants to be the representative has spoken longer than the five minutes that Mara has read script that has been handed to him. He has spoken from his heart as somebody out of the bosom of and I beg you, the people of St. John to turn a fortune for the constituent a representative for St. James. A dynamic speaker when he hits. do not want to go on. I'm very honest about this politics thing. I do not hide nothing in politics. I learned earlier, clock the best way to deal in politics is put everything on the table face up. When I was 21 years old, I go in and jump to help put David Thompson. Out here, so I can speak to you in a way that most of my colleagues on the Barbados Labour Party platform tonight experience of dealing with them. I am familiar with their rhythm. I know how the you must on you. They used to sit down. In case you have access to free tertiary education at the University of the West Indies, you made history then, from the short. And it made history when you became the only place in the Caribbean to have feces balls of human jobby floating on the roads across an entire coast. And for two years, you did nothing about it. From the short, you made history then too. So I beg your star. I beg your star. Don't make no more history. Ring the bell. That way to do. Ring the bell. And don't just ring it. Stop telling foolish lies. Because we all know that you're not loitering around because you, from the short, trying to do nothing to rescue Barbados. But from the short, you never did a thing for 10 years to put Barbados in a better position. You put yourself, you bring out two brand new Mercedes Benz up to last year. But you don't want to know for Barbados, from the short. What from the short is loitering and clinging to power for? Let's be very clear. It's because he so mismanaged this country. And so mismanage his own party. Hospital for a determination if this then is low. Huh? I know you done with the I realize there's March. Ladies and gentlemen, hear me. The three near near Pambi Pambi candidates that together can make one to run against me. I'm only running top of myself. Patrick Todd. A brand new second hand car. A woman named Kim something or the other, I can't remember and nobody else can remember her name. Where she worked, nobody can remember. What she did there, nobody can remember. Anything that she did of excellence or, 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 or significance, nobody can remember. There's nothing outstanding that anybody can remember in her adult life. Whatever her name is, is that she has been a forgettable experience. A fellow that running down in St. James Central. And you would have heard, you would have heard him radio on Tuesday in the People's Parliament. You heard, Ron, you heard Ryan Strong, did you not? I should congratulate Ryan Strong for wiping the floor with them. 
Papa Anus. I sign come on sign price on the red looking at the phone. Mr. Conley, Mr. Conley, but 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 anybody said it now next to you say look look the WhatsApp now come in the phone going off. And Anus, bright boy that Anus is, he said, he he he, you see me? He <laughs> he. I mean, good God, man, is this what they have brought us to? Is this what they have brought us to? From a short, can you do nothing better? Can you produce nothing of more substance? And ladies and gentlemen, let's be very real. You don't unleash that on a serious country facing serious times, serious people in the middle of serious crises in their life. You can't unleash that the difference in this election is a simple one. The Labour Party of 2018 is a Labour Party on the cutting edge. A Labour Party that is ready to govern. It is a Labour Party that is ready to rescue this country from the political leader of any of the groups assembled around Barbados. And we have a depth and breadth of experience and understanding that is second to none in Barbados. And ladies and gentlemen, I want to say to you, that the distinction between right excellent member David Thompson there upon the front. Right? Now, you know, I saw Mara Thompson in Parliament one day with tears in her eye. And I, she had this in her hand. And I asked her, well, what happened? She looked up at me, she shut the book. And she said, well, what didn't happen? And got up and moved. Before she shut it, I noticed she had the page 42 mark. I must tell you, Thompson was not my favorite fella, but I understood why tears were in her eye. I wear a red, and I, I tell you, tears come to my eye too. This is what it says. In the first hundred days, we will introduce agricultural protection legislation that will require a two-thirds majority of both houses of parliament for a change of use of land from agriculture, and we will reserve 30,000 acres of land across the countryside for agricultural use. Now, I want to say to you, ladies and gentlemen, that we are here in St. John, the most fertile of the soils, the most fertile and the largest of the plantations. Wakefield, Pool, Clifton Hall, I left for any Henley, and the giant out there that they left in Nettles for about 10 years, Todd's Estates. Not true? Hoversell. Now, I'm talking about the ones that didn't, didn't get touched, that the body can't be found doing nothing in the soil. That the sons and daughters of St. John can have been put to work. We left a sugar crop that was bringing 40,000 tons of sugar a year in Barbados. You know that now they struggle to get 6.5 or 7,000 tons of sugar. But yet still, yet still, the people in the Democratic Labour Party will tell you that they want to build a $500 million sugar factory. I ain't talking about the fact that I can't start the crop for this year. I talk about the fact that there are people in the cabinet of Barbados who have done nothing to advance agriculture in this country or in this parish, which means they've done nothing to advance the opportunity for St. John men and women to earn a living the way they've earned a living for years. But still the one bit of $500 million U.S. sugar factory. Not because they love concrete, but because they love steel. The same document at the same page goes on to say, we will make it compulsory that all property sales be advertised with prices on the local market prior to promotion and sale on the international market to non-Barbadians. All property sales. But yet still, we in the Labour Party had to expose the fact that the Barbados Hilton, the Errol Barrow, made friends with, with, with Mr. Hilton. You know, he might actually name Hilton. And bar met friends with the man to get the Hilton to come here back in the 60s. And Errol Barra, not Kerry Simmons, but anybody, the right excellent national hero said that it is one of the most prestigious pieces of real estate to be found in Barbados. You know, from the short, make arrangements to sell the damn thing. And I tell you, but his manifesto 
It's telling you that not only should you have been told, but the price should have been advertised in Barbados. You understand the extent to which these people have turned their back on the philosophy that governed and guided the founding fathers of the Democratic Labour Party. And then even today, even today, you would have seen a paper, Don Villain is telling you, don't worry about the DLP today, vote for what happened in 1961. Well, you know, the interesting thing about 1961, comrades and friends, is that in 1961, Don Villain was not yet born. Nor was Chris Sinclair. Nor was Richard Seeley. So we are at the thin end of the intellectual wedge. Because they are coming to tell you, sensible people that went to school, that you should vote for a, a government that will be in existence in 2021 on the basis of what people who were not yet born did in 1961. Not one could have been in the Arabic cabinet. Not one. So the point that I am making to you, ladies and gentlemen, is that this Democratic Labour Party is a vessel that has lost its way. It is a vessel that it hit up on a reef and is going down hard. Frandon Short knows this. He is a political desperado clinging to power, loitering in the office of the Prime Minister after closing time. And we have a simple, simple mission for Frandon Short. Frandon Short, start to respond that the issues that have already gone into the public domain are coming out of the Barbados Labour Party's manifesto. Start to respond from the short to the issues because while England was condemning this land of ours today about the fact that sewage is flowing in the streets, the Barbados Labour Party is the only party that has put a solution for the problem before the country. While England was condemning Barbados today about little children getting knife in their belly on a school bus, the Barbados Labour Party in its manifesto is the only party that has put a response to that plight before the country. While England was condemning Barbados today, the Barbados Labour Party is the only party that has made a commitment by way of its manifesto to what we would do about the problem with the sanitation trucks in this country. Can you, can you, mean you understand it? If you drive through Cynthia constituency, you will see a brand new building being built. I hear it costs 40 odd million dollars. I have no doubt that not just concrete enough steel in there too. Yes. Huh? Yes. And that building, that 40 million dollars for building, I, I, I hear that. But you can tell me you can't find two or three million for the sanitation trucks. So that today, a white woman can write in England to say about we down here that Barbados smells filthy. Barbados smells not just, as she put it, not just because of the feces in the street, but because garbage is not collected for months in some part of the country. Yeah, that, that's what it should be saying about us, man, after 50 years of independence. And that is why Mara Thompson has turned her back on them. Because Mara Thompson know that they betrayed her. She ran as David Thompson's queen. And they treated her as though she was the party's vagrant. She came to you as a queen. And they treated her like a vagrant. She had to wait 10 years for the St. John Polyclinic to be done when David Thompson told you it was the first priority of any government that the Democratic Labour Party would form. When water could not be found in the pipes in St. Joseph and in St. Thomas and in St. Andrew, it was also missing from in the pipes in parts of St. John and Gold Hill. Mara Thompson said there was no water for five months. And you know that tonight, to this day, Mark David, uh, we name from the short, has not made it possible, found the time to pay a single visit to the homes in Gall Hill to commiserate with the people who have been loyal, who have been faithful, who have been dedicated to the Democratic Labour Party from the time there was a Democratic Labour Party. He couldn't even pass air upon them. 
but wants you to re-elect him. St. John, tell Francis Short politely, sir, go to hell. This constituency deserves better. The country deserves better. We have put before you a team of candidates, all of whom have come to acquit themselves. I have done so with excellence and in some cases standing levels of expertise in their fields. We, we are a party that is the oldest political party anywhere in the Caribbean. This party has a breadth of history and people who are not candidates anymore, but who were candidates, who were representatives, who are there ready, willing, and able to put shoulder to the wheel to help turn around the plight and the fortunes in Barbados. And ladies and gentlemen, all we need, all we ask you for is the opportunity. The opportunity. Night after night, week after week, we have come to you. We have outlined to you the problems facing Barbados. We have come to the point now where we start to speak to you about the solutions to the problems facing Barbados. We have gone and participated and wanted to have a people's parliament. We have had two. First, Kurt Humphrey. He polished the floor with all of them. Then Ryan Strong. He polished the floor with all of them. Who they will say next week, the same thing will happen again. Whoever it will be. The Labour Party, if the same one. Because there's only so much lips they could take. The, 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 the. The point is, ladies and gentlemen, that as I leave this platform, I leave you with a simple message. Invest your confidence in the lady who has been tried in the balances. She has been weighed in the balances and has not been found wanting. Give me a motley the chance, as I ask you to give Charles Griffith the chance to go forward and chart a direction in the interest of the welfare and the advancement and development and the turnaround of this place called Barbados. The Dems don't want from the shore any more than you. That's why there was an eager 11 in 2011. And the same way they decided that they want from the shore, then they mean tonight they don't want from the shore. They just can't decide who the hell they want. But we know who you want. Stand with us and we will stand with you. Good night. And God bless you all. Oh my gosh. What has been delivered here tonight, St. John, is a message of hope to the people of this constituency. And it gives me great pleasure, great pleasure to welcome the leader of the Barbados Labour Party who has put together an excellent cadre of people to serve this country and to transform the Barbadian economy and society. A woman who has been blessed with the ability to represent, to understand and to be able to move amongst the people. To be able to feel the pulse of the people at every place that she goes, she's able to feel the pain and to be able to express it in a way that people can understand. Join me in welcoming Mia Amor Motley, the next Prime Minister of this country, the first female Prime Minister that Barbados will ever have. Join me in welcoming Mia Amor Motley to the stage. She has given the people of this country, Charles Griffith, in whom the people of this constituency must be so enough to, uh, confidence in being able to elect him as the next representative for St. John. Mia Amor Motley is the next leader of this country. She is the leader who is going to bring hope and restore confidence in the Barbados economy, people. Give her a round of applause as she comes to the stage. There is only one Mia Moore Motley. There is nobody in this country who has worked as hard, done as much work to be able to put forward the policies and programs of a Barbados Labour Party, who is prepared to put her neck on the line for her people, who can go anywhere across the world representing Barbados. People across the world are waiting for a Mia Amor Motley to become the Prime Minister of this country. And the people of Barbados, the people of St. John, deserve better. 
We have had too many years of poor economic leadership in this country, and it is Barbados' time. It is the people of this country. It is your time to be able to give her the opportunity, to be able to execute the vision that she has worked so hard to be able to deliver to the people. Give her and her team of candidates the opportunity to be able to leave people tonight. St. John, a new wind is blowing through St. John. Do not sit on your laurels and believe this election is going to just be handed to the Barbados Labour Party. Come out in your numbers and vote. Come out in your numbers, support Charles Griffith, support the members of the Barbados Labour Party. Welcome, welcome the leader of the Barbados Labour Party and the next Prime Minister of this country. You bring it down fast, just as I was enjoying it. Where is Charles Griffith? Where is Charles Griffith? Ladies and gentlemen, earlier this week, we were told that you only make history when something happens for the first time. Ladies and gentlemen, since Barbados has become a nation, the people of St. John have never known what it is to have one of their own represent them through universal adult suffrage in the parliament of this country. Ladies and gentlemen, since Barbados has become a nation, the people of St. John have remained faithful to the Democratic Labour Party and have never known what it is to create history by allowing one of ours in the Barbados Labour Party to represent you and to give you some BLP love. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight I stand here with you. Tonight, on the 15th of March, saying to you as we come to the people of St. John here at Four Roads, that I have come formally to do that which a courteous and a polite leader does. To say to you that I want to start a relationship with you. To say to you that I want to create history tonight by starting on a journey with you. To say to you that this young man, as he said to you tonight, represents that vision and hope of Errol Walton Barrow. That one day, one day, one day, that the people of St. John shall throw up to go to the House of Assembly, to mount those steps, a man from the bosom of this parish. This is the man that I ask you. This is the man that I ask you tonight to make history with. Because it is not just simply like Frondel would like for it to be recorded in the history books but it is to make life better for you and you and you and you and you and you and all of you. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the man of the moment. Thank you, Charles Griffith. All the time. And it is in your hands that that destiny shall be shaped. And you know, you have to forgive me tonight if I take a few minutes to thank some people. Because over the course of this week, 
you got to see some aspects of what we want to do for you. The policies that we would want to share with you. It's been in circulation. And I want to thank the many, 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 many people who have texted, who have called, who have emailed, and who have even come to see me. And they have said that they are happy, they feel excited, and that they feel that there is the opportunity to move Barbados to a different stage. They feel that they too can make some changes, and some of them have added, and some of them have asked for some tweaks, and some of them have asked for some new things. Because what you see is a process, as Dale would have told you, that is rooted in something we started four years ago that they laughed at us with when we started to rub shoulders. Because it's only with rubbing shoulders with you that we will understand what it is that you want and the things that you're experiencing and that the things that you need to see change in this country. But we didn't stop at the rubbing shoulders. When I tell you, and you heard Clyde say it too, that we've been working hard. And we've been meeting with hundreds of people for the last nine months across different sectors. It was because we want to fine tune for you at this difficult moment in our country's history. At this difficult moment in your life. Something that will not just make a difference. Because what have the Democratic Labour Party and Fundell Stewart done? They have been patching a boat with chewing gum for the last 10 years. You understand that they're patching a boat with chewing gum to get the water out, Rogi. You would know what I mean. My brother, they would patch the boat. And Charles, they ain't rowing the boat ashore to the at all. But what we have shown you in the thing that is circulating the aspects of our policy is that this moment is not about patching a boat anymore. Not even with the real thing. This moment is about building a new boat. And building it even with new materials. And why? From St. Lucy to St. Philip. From St. John to St. James. You ask Bajans, do you feel good about where your country is going? The majority say no. The majority feel fundamentally that this country is on the wrong track. You know, like when you're not feeling well, you go to the doctor, you say, doctor, I don't know where it is, but I know I'm not feeling well. I know I'm not well. I know I'm ill. And we know it. And the longer you feel ill, the more the symptoms come out. More symptoms start to show. And you heard Kerry Simmons give a brilliant, blistering speech just now. Regretting the fact that what the British people woke up to in the Telegraph newspaper today was a commentary on Barbados that is so sad that we feel shame. Uh, and when they can talk about the foul stench it wasn't only the stench on the south coast they were talking about. They were talking about the foul economic stench. They were talking about corruption in government. They were talking about indiscipline in a society. They were talking about the decline of a society and a nation. Do you understand what the motto of Barbados is? Pride and industry. We are a proud people. When Errol Barrow went to the OAS and President Johnson said to him that we will pay as a young independent nation for Barbados to join the OAS, Errol Barrow said, where I come from, if you can't afford the Jews, you don't join the club. That was Errol Barrow in 1967. Tonight in 2018, 
The Democratic Labour Party of 2018 has devalued and diminished us and downgraded us as a country to the point where everyone who read that article today shook their head in shame and said, Lord, have mercy on our people. Lord, have mercy on our country. And well, we know that better can be done. We are forced to wait as a prime minister loiters so that he can go and take a picture with the queen next month. Uh, uh, and you know what hurts? Is that I would like to tell the Telegraph, how dare you publish such an article? But we can't tell them that when we know it is true. Far from telling them that, we have now to recommit to make sure that nobody can ever write that kind of story about Barbados or Bajans again. And I say that to you tonight from my heart here in St. John. Whether it be under his spirit or his shadow. The one thing about Barbados, whether it is Art Grantley Adams, Tom Adams or Harold Barrow. We stood for something proud. We brought up our children to be proud. And that is why the work that the Barbados Labour Party and my colleagues have done. And I thank them from Clyde Maskell right back through to all of the members of the Parliamentary Party and others that you haven't gotten to know yet who have worked tirelessly with me. Because this plan for Barbados is not about Mia Motley or any single member of the Parliamentary Party. It is about the people of Barbados. It is about what you want. It is about what you've expressed. It is about what you have said must happen. And you know what is good? That even if the Dems want to take peace, they can take peace to their manifesto too, because you know the problems with them. Uh, but you see, they feel that governing is about pronouncements. Government by pronouncement. Announce this, pronounce that. Now so you felt good. When you heard them tell you about 40% procurement from government for small businesses. But you too learned that government is not simply about a pronouncement. It's not about a good idea. We like the idea too. But if an idea does not have a team to execute it. If an idea is not buttressed by a road map to know how to execute it. A good idea cannot become good policy or benefits to the people who it was intended to help. Look at what they did with constituency councils. I spoke to you at Sheffield Pasture on Sunday night. And we spoke to the precept of deepening democracy and having you play a greater role in the things that matter in this country. Things that are around your community by Sunday. You should have a say in. But what do we get instead? What do we get instead? The Democratic Labour Party of 2018 that started in 2008 took the concept, corrupt the concept, and ended up with an extension of a DLP branch, constituency branch, instead of empowering you, the people of the community, to make decisions about your life. So simply having a good idea is not enough. What matters is the team. And that brings me to the point of the very sorry, sad state of affairs. That into the 90 days within which a writ must be returned. With a dissolution of parliament. And you have a prime minister who cannot even after last night's council meeting announce a candidate to the people of St. John for the Democratic Labour Party. It is a sad and sorry state of affairs. But it is a microcosm about a man who cannot make decisions. That's what it is about, you know. And at the end of the night, 
What are the people told? Wait for the MP Mara Thompson to return before you make a decision on who should be the candidate. Now she is not due back, I am told, until near the end of March. But Barbados' future, the calling of an election, the determination by the people of St. John as to who is the better man or person to run is to be put on pause. When I tell you that I don't have to wait because the names that I hear are such that it is twiddly D or twiddly dumb. I don't know which one is D and I don't know which one is dumb. But what I do know is that the people of St. John have told me to tell them back, twiddly don't. Don't come. Don't send. And don't talk. You know that. Some call it Tom or Jerry. It doesn't matter. But what the people, whether I was in Clifton, Clifton Hall, whether I was in Welch's Saturday night, whether I was by Ground Zero, wherever I have been, whether I was in St. Margaret's, the people have sent back a simple message that this Democratic Labour Party of 2018 has forsaken the people of St. John. This Democratic Labour Party of 2018, you only have to go around the corner and see the bush on the NHC sign for the lots at Cherry Grove. I come to town. I come to town. I come to town. But as a good bus man, you're all over the place. <laughs> The point, my friends, is this. That wherever you go, I hear people talk about reaching back into history. Memories. Memories can only make you feel good, but memories don't put food on the table. Memories don't pay bus fare. Memories don't pay the taxes. Memories don't help you take care of your children. Where are you going with the memories? But you have a Democratic Labour Party in 2018 that has so downgraded and devalued not just this country, but this parish. How do you move from a Prime Minister who is a founding member of the party, Minister of Finance, to a next Prime Minister, Minister of Finance, to the Prime Minister's wife when the Prime Minister dies in his prime? And as George told you, was given the benefit of the doubt and the sympathy because people don't like to see the body dead in the middle of the prime. And you go from all of them and now come with two personal assistants. But what the two personal assistants can do that the two prime ministers can do? If the political will was not there before under the prime minister's wife, if they didn't treat her with the respect to help you, causing her to jump ship because she jumped ship because she knew what was coming for her. And I can't blame her. Because if you know that you're about to get maul after you went so high in them numbers, she jumped ship. But the problem with this whole conversation in at George Street is that who else want to run besides Twiddly D and Twiddly Dumb only want to come to St. John because they believe it is a safe seat. They only want to come to St. John because they believe that it can give them a pension. Now what is wrong with this conversation? It is about who can get a pension now. Who can get a safe seat? You understand that the difference is that when you heard Charles Griffith tonight, you heard a man that took you on a tour of St. John. You heard a man that could tell you from College Savannah right back across the entire parish. 
what he is going on, what is needed. He spoke with my authority tonight when he told the people of Bath, Tenantry, and Welch that they are going to get through with the lots. Because you should not have people holding on and begging, begging for the most basic things that a government can do. That a Ministry of Housing should have been doing instead of enriching Mark Maloney with 2,300 more lots at, at, at Bushy Park. And lots at Coverley. And tonight I shall not talk about the injustice of Felicia being charged for the death of her son. While Mark Maloney's island remains on the highway at Coverley. Something has to be wrong in this country. I will talk crazy about that Sunday night at Briar Hall. You have to recognize that this country has to be about more and that there has to be a promise. And then, you know, why Charles Griffith? Why Charles? Because at the end of the day, when you weigh each candidate, any of the ones they're talking about, or Charles, weigh them pound for pound. Put them under the microscope. And you will see that Charles is not just simply the better man, but he is the best man for the job. He's not just of St. John, from St. John, in St. John still, but he understands also that of the five, 1,500 people under the age of 30, that they need opportunity, that they need guidance, that they need somewhere to be able to focus on. And it's just not about sports. And believe you me, Charles coached sonnets. Charles was a big up in the Barbados Basketball Association. So I am not downgrading sports in any way. Because anybody who knows me knows that with the Lime Pelican football tournament and Dopey, you had a team in that tournament. People feel that Dopey and I are now friends. That is not true. Bless you, son. The Labour Party welcomes you warmly. And I simply ask all who would want to cast aspersions on you, why you don't cast aspersions on anybody else, but they feel that because you are a black man, they can treat you as a chattel. Well, my brother in the family of the Labour Party, you are a cherished person, not a chattel. But I say to you, that when Charles is looking at these things, he's not just looking at the security of tenure for people who want house lots and houses. We have sat and discussed how we are going to bring opportunity. You know one of the things that hurt me? In Welch's Saturday night, ask the others. Falcock could tell you. Kim Martin. They like, don't want me to call you that. There are youngsters who went to university, come out of university in 2014, 15. Before that, they did stuff at the polytechnic training. They know who I'm talking about when I say so. And to this day, can't get a job having left the University of the West Indies doing a degree in business and entrepreneurship. It is time we bring development to the people of St. John. And I am here tonight to tell you the study ahead. This is a parish. Do you know what is the only parish in this country that has ever had education from primary to secondary to tertiary for 300 years? It is St. John. You had primary schools. You had Lodge School that is over 300 years. And you had Codrington College. And, and therefore... When in 2010, in Carters, I spoke to the people of St. John and said, look, we need to look to a future where we develop St. John as the hub for educational tourism. 
When students come and they need accommodation, I'm not talking about big, ugly, concrete buildings. I am talking about buildings that are sensitive to the environment. I am talking about nice wooden two-story buildings that would have students in it. A student is a nine-month tourist. You think that a student can go to Bridgetown to have a drink or they're going to go into Bath Tenantry and Welch's? Welch's got four shops. You think that they're going to go into St. Martin's or they're going to come to Spikestown? So you bring development to the parish by making sure that you have tourism that is centered around education and health. When you're down here and you feel these breeze, you feel the breeze. It makes you feel as though you're healthy, like you're recuperating. When you can grow your own vegetables, when you can have all the money. You know how much money people is pay for organic vegetables? You know that I can get up here and curse Frandell and curse George Pilgrim and curse all of them. What am I going to put on your table? But when I get here and share with you that the vision that I have and the path that I want you to walk with me is such that it does not mean that you got left St. John and come to town for a job. That people should be coming in to St. John looking for work because there will be so much activity. Do you understand that Villanova Cross there should have been a center to do international arbitration where people who got disputes, not ones in Barbados, but who fly from overseas that don't want to be in the winter can come down here and argue the cases there. If they really want to go to the sea in the evening or the weekend, then they can go down bath. But what you have is a serene environment. Do you know how many people know that a former Prime Minister of England used to own Villanova? That that was his holiday retreat. That that is where he used to come to think. Do we understand what we have in this parish? Do we understand that the fishermen and the divers in Martins Bay and Concept Bay need to be empowered? And Rogi, how long have you and I talked about the future of the fishing industry in this country? You want to know what a Labour Party government will do? We recognize that a lot of fishermen in Barbados cannot afford to move themselves to be able to buy the boats with the most recent technology so that they don't have to buck about wondering where the fish gathering. Don't waste a lot of money in the diesel. And we need, in the same way that Grantley Adams took the fishing industry from sail to engine in the 50s, and Brees and John took it, you know Heather, to ice boats in the late 70s. We need to be able now to take it to the next level. And my colleagues and I have agreed that we will invest in the next term by ensuring that $25 million is made available to the fishing industry so that men can buy boats and rent them from the government because they don't have the ability to go and do it themselves. In St. John, you have both Martins Bay and Concept Bay. Of course, the people in St. Philip and the people in St. Joseph will also benefit. Of course, the people in Spikestown and Christchurch and Oystens and Bridgetown. But the point is that we take young men and make sure that they stay in the fishing industry and can earn from the fishing industry. And we believe that they should not be limited to the waters of Barbados either. Because under the single market and economy, they can go anywhere and fish from Tobago in the south, right ball up the way to the north. You know how much sea eggs they got off the coast of Jamaica? You know how much sea eggs they got in the Northern Caribbean? You know how much Bajan's paying for sea eggs for the pint now? I know that, baby friend. <laughs> My people, the church, the church is one of the biggest landowners in St. John. You just heard the Archbishop say that they don't want simply to sell off land. It was in the paper. We need to sit down with the church and bring sensible joint ventures, not just with the government and the church, but with young people and business people in this country 
who work in with the church, with the land, can make a difference to bring development to the people of St. John. We need cottage industry and craft to line the whole roads where the cruise ship passengers come. They're only here for a day. So they want to see the best. Where are the taxi men bringing them? They're bringing them to the East Coast. They're bringing them to the Scotland District. They're bringing them to St. John. And when they're brought here, what do you get to carry back home to buy food for your family? A little sale. Horace, you're a taxi driver. You know that they will stop down here. But as Charles said, you got to fix the roads. You really feel taxi men going to come down here willingly to have to replace shocks every two weeks? Madness. So when I say to you that there cannot be two Barbadoses, believe you me, that under the leadership of the Barbados Labour Party, every parish shall count. Every parish shall count. Every parish shall be included. You can't have people worrying about whether they can get roads fixed or water fixed. You heard Glenn Clark from this platform tonight give you a list of roads, a list of house spots that the Barbados Labour Party did for the people of St. John and we were not representing him. But what and how much sweeter it shall be if we shall have somebody at the table and George Payne, I've heard you. George Payne, I have heard you. I shall not pick a cabinet tonight, but I shall not ignore my chairman when I pick a cabinet. When you realize that you need somebody at the table making noise for you, and I have nothing to say for or against Mara Thompson, that is the truth. Just like the other two coming in Twiddly D, Twiddly Dumb, Mara's Twiddly Do, Twiddly Don't. <laughs> nothing to say for and nothing to say against. I know this, that her interests have not led to your development in St. John. And that is what bothers me. And that the conversation in the Democratic Labour Party disturbs me. Because it cannot be about literally... It cannot be about literally who can get this safe seat. We haven't even started to talk about some of the other things. In St. George the other night, and I want you all in St. John to listen to. When we say that we need to stop Bajans from being and becoming criminals for all kinds of foolishness, you go to court. And all of a sudden, selling without a license, Denton is a criminal. Hanging up your clothes next to the highway. If you had a policeman who didn't like you and charge you, and you get found guilty with that, you're a criminal. Every single thing. And what are we saying? That it is about time that we reserve criminal penalties for real, real crime. That if a man commit murder, or rape, or burglary, or robbery, or any of those traditional criminal offenses. No problem. Fine and sentence. Sent to jail. Suspended sentence. Anything so. Criminal conviction. Anything so. But you really going to make a man a criminal for riding a bicycle without a helmet? <laughs> I'm sorry for the people like you, my brother, that got locks. Because most helmets in make to fit locks. You, you understand that black people got a problem with that because most helmets ain't made to fit locks. Can you imagine, as I said Sunday night, that somebody give you a hand of bananas and some chickens? Them going to the airport have gone way and somebody meet you, a warden who is not a policeman street, meet you and tell you, Meet you and tell you that I need the proof of the receipt. But the person in getting the receipt could have give you. Maybe they give you. They sell you. But if you sell everything, you got to buy everything. Not true. <laughs> they give you. And all of a sudden, you in at District C. 
till morning waiting for the plane to get to England before you can get out and the person says it's true it's true in fact you might have to wait till lunch time because the person got to get from Gatwick to wherever they're going in Reading the phone off they don't want better roaming charges so you got to wait till they get to the house and all of a sudden you lock up inside the police station until somebody can say it's true I give you the Hannah bananas and a few chickens what madness have we come to in this country is this what we have elected people to do in the parish of St. John? Is this what we have elected people to do in the country of Barbados? And then the fellas on Ground Zero asked me Saturday night about this police act. And I tell them, yes, it is so. But you know what makes it worse? That nowhere that that legislation has been put has it led to a reduction in crime. So what are we overreaching to do? They tell me today that they may want to come for me before nomination day so I will not be available to go to be nominated. Well, I say my brothers and sisters, I am not afraid. I walk this walk on the shoulders of the people of this country and with God in my heart. And whatever they want to do to me, try but i know that each time you have come each time you have come you have come with malice in your heart and because i have and believe that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things unseen because i understand that the peace of god surpasses all understanding because i believe that they may mean it for evil Genesis 15 verses 20 but the God meant it for good I said bring it on but I want to tell you this I am told that the Democratic Labour Party is coming all of a sudden to rename the community center at Gall Hill well, the residents of Gall Hill who are here, let me give you a few things. One, the Barbados Labour Party, when we win the election, shall finish the roads in Gall Hill for you. Fear not. Two, that we will also have a street jam and we will bring Lil Rick and Hollaback and all the St. John people to be on that street jam when we finish it for you. But I am told that they want to rename the centre at Gall Hill. And interestingly enough, it is not after... It's not after David Thompson. And it is not after Errol Barrow. How does a party that prays in, in Errol Barrow's name for everything? Tell me what they have named after Errol Barrow in the parish of St. John. Tell me what they have named in the parish of St. John after Errol Barrow. How do you now come to profess that your love for Barrow is so great? And not even the center at Gall Hill you're going to rename after Errol Barrow. When I give the people of St. John, as I give the people of Barbados a solemn wish. When it came to recognizing Mr. Barrow's contribution, the Barbados Labour Party and Owen Arthur put a statue in Independence Square to show tribute to him as leader of this country. But I have always felt, and the time is running, I have always felt, that we need to recognize the representation because prime ministers are not elected like presidents. They represent constituencies. And in the same way we have recognized Grantley Adams in the parish of St. Joseph at the Grantley Adams School, we need to recognize Errol Barrow in St. John as the member of parliament for St. John. In fact, the longest serving member of parliament for St. John. The Barbados Labour Party will make that right. And we need to do it in St. Thomas with Tom Adams. And we need to do it. Mr. Arthur has now retired. We will do it in St. Peter for Mr. Arthur. And we will do it in St. Michael's South when we retire from Del Stewart as well. So ladies and gentlemen, trust me. I have come to tell you about a love affair I have had with St. John all my life. I have always dreamt about living next to the sea on the East Coast. 
spending my years here and living in a chattel house with a big veranda. I went and bought a piece of land in St. Margaret's about seven, eight years ago. I am not like the ministers who can pay for it cash. I have to pay for it through a loan from City of Bridgetown Credit Union. When I finish paying for it, I will build a modest chattel house. And I will count myself as one of the residents of St. John. So that when you vote for Charles Griffith, you are also going to have a neighbor in Mia Amor Motley. And I shall come to you. So that when you see me and Charles together, you shall have the benefit, not of a Democratic Labour Party Prime Minister, but of a Barbados Labour Party Prime Minister who loves you. I know who you, the people of St. John, love. But I want to say to you, as Sparrow told us many years ago, love who love you. I love you. Good night and God bless the people of St. John. Ladies and gentlemen, that brings us the Briar Hall playing field near the Graham Hall roundabout this Sunday at 7 p.m. Come here in the rear, Ryan Strawn, Wilfred Abrams, Dr. William Dugate, Ralph Thorne, Tyron Lovell, Kerry Simmons, candidate Adrian Medic Ford, and party leader Mia Amor Motley. Don't despair, Christchurch. There's a medic in the house. The Barbados Labour Party at the Briar Hall playing field this Sunday at 7 p.m. The Barbados Labour Party moves to Christchurch West Central at the Briar Hall Plain Field near the Graham Hall Roundabout this Sunday at 7 p.m. Come here in the rear, Ryan Strawn, Wilfred Abrams, Dr. William Dugate, Ralph Thorne, Tyron Lovell, Kerry Simmons, candidate Adrian Medic Ford, and party leader Mia Amor Motley. Don't despair, Christchurch. There's a medic in the house. The Barbados Labour Party.